Volt 2. Volt is, in the women's event, it tends to be something that, depending on the amount of fat which muscle are born with, you can do well or not. And she can. Handspring, one and a half, with a half twist. In women's vault, divided into five categories according to difficulty. And in this event, although it's competition three, because it's the qualification round, they're going by the competition two rules, they must perform two vaults. And then those two vaults are average. Now they can perform two the same, so she could go back and do that same vault again and try and get a better landing on it. Or she could perform something a little better. can understand the announcer once again as Hulan Mo of China 9.550 second jump which will be averaged with the first a mark of 10 and uh, as Monica Phelps our resident expert pointed out she really does have very powerful legs and doing a good job to absorb and slow down the rotation in the landing there it looked like she was going to tumble over at one stage, so a good recovery maybe on the first vault as the youngster from China tends to improve on the second. Yes, and that was a stuck landing. You see, the landing penalties are very, very hard in this new code. The slightest murmur is deductible, so even a body adjustment is deductible. And if they take up to two or three steps, they can lose four tenths. And this really is a preventative measure to encourage good technique and reduce the ankle injuries. Just a little bit of knee bend on the twist. But certainly, a better second bolt for no. Dual apparatus final with 236 men competing. An improvement there for Hulan Mo. So, good standings for a young Chinese girl as we go on to the asymmetric bars. And Romania's Nadia Hatagan. Every time we hear the word Nadia, we think of the the great Nadia Comaneci, who really put Romanian gymnastics, the women, right up on the map. And we in Britain are benefiting from that Romanian knowledge, having Adrian Stan as our women's national coach. A magnesium carbonate that they put on their hands to avoid slipping, and they all have their special mix of spit and chalk. Some of them, like the bars, which are actually made of fiberglass and not wood, covered in chalk, and others like them nice and clean. So Nadia Hattigan, ready for her exercise. Looking for three B elements, one C element, and two D elements in this competition three. One release and catch out of the way, there's the Ginger after the full twisting giant. Good transition from low to high bar, the catch is not quite to handstand, but counts. Blind change forward, giant, double front fly away, tough. Doesn't seem to have done Nadia Hadigan confidence any harm at all there a good start for her per first performance in this second subdivision in the women's qualification and in slow motion with the overhead view we did see some uh, bent arms and really this in this day and age the penalty for bent arms is extortionate two tenths she can be penalized and we'll just see how true to form the judges are being 
for Lawrence Tumble and Valeri, well, he'll be very lucky indeed to qualify for that particular individual final. Do Young Hu of Korea with the first of her two vaults. And there we see a tremendous difference in standard between the Chinese and the Korean girl. Handspring one and a half tough with a very late half twist suggesting under rotation. They're just managing to scrape around the twist. In fact, I think the judges, she didn't have a straight body to enable her to twist efficiently. So she'll have a heavy penalty. 9.762 for Nadia Hadigan of Romania. Now that could keep her in the top eight and the qualification placing. Front up rise to handstand into forward giant. The Mexican Murano on the A-bars. Nice to see some Mexican women. A long time since we've seen them represented in the World Championships. Not doing badly there. Double pipe fly away. But swinging nicely, travelling easily, transition over and under the bars. Good circling action, but not in the same class as Hattigan. Hattigan's 9.76 will really be difficult to beat. Jump forward on landing, going to cost her over a tenth. And there are the vault scores of the Korean fifth position. 9.312 the average scoring of those two volts for Su Young Eurosport Live. Will you rejoin us with Haley Edigal on the asymmetric bars? And for those of you awaiting the score of Peter Hogan of Australia, 8.950, 11th position, which is not good enough to put Peter into the final. And the top score so far on bars is from Hattigan of Romania, 9.7. So we know the gymnasts know exactly what they're up against. So that's the highest score that we've seen to date. And this routine, clean, but nowhere near that level of performance. As she rotates, you can see the knees and feet slacken. There, the shoot front. Barani out, long, not lifted above the bar, and rather tatty around the legs. And I'm being observant rather than critical. Farazzi from Italy scoring 9-3-1-8 on vault. 10 out of 10 for trying on that dismount. Haley Edgar there, 8 one 2 Judging really particular on this new code. Nice for our gymnast. Bring you that score as... Kochikova in her second vault. Pity about the landing, it was a long one. Handspring, one and a half, pike for the half with 9-9 tariff. Tariff being the degree of difficulty, the maximum score available on such a vault. Just not managing to hold that landing. They should stay still in really almost a, a parallel sort of plie position before their attractions in his life. A different lifestyle totally and that could have something to do with his lack of form. Pod Kopieva to Volt. Oh, pity. She had a lovely fly out of the one and a half into the twist that really had far more rotation than she suspected. She could have even flown into the twist earlier there. The opening. Anticipating the landing by bringing the feet under her hips to causing the step back. It could be, now that she's developed the feel, that uh, she could produce a really super second vault. Two volts, the average of the two. They are entitled to do the same vault twice, or they can do different vaults.
9625. That was a, a healthy score on the first ball, considering the landing, because he had a, a foot penalty and uh, a change in shape causing the foot penalty. From the Ukraine. Was in Birmingham in the World Championships last year. She's a bit more beefy since then. Put on a bit of weight. Yes. Yes, she really did. Good brain. Good kinesthetic awareness. Knew exactly what she had to do to alter that timing on the landing. And stocky little gymnast. Uh, good power on both. And from this overhead angle in this slow-mo, we should see the length. Good length. Very good length indeed. Longer than her body away from the horse. Nice thrust. In slow motion we saw that she still was a little bit under-rotated, but by far the better vault of the two. And of course they're average, so her first will count against her. And that's good enough to put her into second position, 9.668. That's just ahead of the Russian who jumped before her, Lilia Podkopayeva goes second and here's the girl that we've all been waiting to see and Monica she looks a little beefier a little stronger but let's see if the temperament and the mind is a little more settled and mature than we saw in the world a year ago give a good vote well even though she was very light in 93 and very exciting she did have some very bad technical faults but because of her size they were disguised the speed of her work now we see that really um she hasn't matured and got out of those bad technical faults very bent arms on the top of the horse i think that we would term that vault as tariff bashing going for difficulty and not form hit and hope and she hit and miss well Asymmetric bars is her favoured of all the apparatus, but she knows that if she's to compete in the all-around competition, she needs to have a good start to these world championships, and 9.550, well, that is by virtue of the high tariff, with the second vault coming up. Dominique Dawes of the United States of America. Yeah, that 9.55, I, I believe that was just too generous. One and a half twist. That was better, but the first one had such bent arms, bent legs all the way over, totally over-rotated. She ran on the landing, and I really do think 955 was generous. That was a much better vault, the second one. There's the Arab Spring, the Ochenko entry, bent arms again, but better twist, but still so badly judged. She had to take a huge step at the end. And really, we're talking about a gymnast of world-class calibre. And the landing is badly judged. Only just scraping more marks. 9575. And seventh position for Dominique Dawes there with a lot of talented and established gymnasts to come. She'll be lucky to qualify to the final in the vault, but she'll look forward to her chance in the asymmetric bars as we said earlier Dominique's most favoured event and also we will now even more keenly than before await to see Shannon Miller to see if she can perform just a little better than her teammate Dominique to give us a form indication of the American squad I think it could be that uh, Shannon will hang on to her form better because she's a lighter physique uh, potentially she's not going to be so large and she was always tighter than Dominique And so uh, here, the bars being prepared with just the right amount of chalk and water. Notice that some gymnasts work with hand guards and some without. And all coaches recommend the use of hand guards, but at the end of the day, you can drive a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can't make them wear guards. And then when they do rip in training, well, what do we say? Told you so. Just cut down a couple of days training. So working the way to prepare the A-bars for her first performance is Chiara Ferrazzi of Italy. Giving the bars a mean look there. Full foot from the Giants. 
line change. Vernon hop over. Oh, nice. Back somersault. Nice flight element, different. Another full twist. Nice combination there, the full twist into the catchev. Of course, the catchev coming from the men's high bar work. And a big dismount. Full twisting double back, but unfortunately, it really isn't worth doing if you fall off the landing mat. And I don't mean to be cruel, but this is the name of the game. The losses are so great on the landing. That sometimes they're not worth doing. But of course, every gymnast has his or her personal reasons for using an element. If she's in here for experience, then the coach will say, right, throw the big dismount. Doesn't matter, you're only in here for experience. You don't stand a chance of getting into the medals. Let's see how you cope with it on the big day. Well, I don't think Miss Ferrazzi can be faulted for her determination. She really did psych herself up right from the beginning and even right to the end there that look of determination upon the young 17 year old's face and a very gutsy and tough performer i feel there monica not an easy one to coach probably probably not but i wouldn't mind a few of her in my gym <laughs> big dismount but in slow motion we actually saw she she had a hand touch she put a hand on the floor so she'll have a, a bad landing penalty kusigi from Japan, having done her first Vault 9262, must have been a bit of a catastrophe to go down that low. But Marie never was a particularly strong vaulter. And she's quite hefty and needs a lot of power to be able to use that weight. Full twisting Yurchenko. Again, we see slow motion. Yep, the first must have been a mistake. 9H tariff for the full twisting Yurchenko. And it only seems like yesterday that Natalia Yurchenko performed that vault for the first time in 1983. That's when it was, and now so many gymnasts throughout the world are able to do the vault so competently. Chiara Ferrazzi of Italy waits patiently for her score from the judges for her routine on the asymmetric bars. Finally, we see a little smile. The coach has finally broken the eyes there, and she'll have learned a lot from this. Yes, yeah, she looks a very, a very hungry gymnast. Uh, 9312. For Kasugi of Japan. She won't. You're staying with the women's competition, I feel, to see Yelena Piskun of Belarusia, the world champion in the vault from Birmingham last year. Marilu Cozinho of Canada prepares for the asymmetric bars as Chiara goes into fourth position. And that keeps her in the eighth and could be one of Italy's first qualifiers for a world championship final in the asymmetric bars. The Canadian girl, now Cozinho, Nice hex transition to the high bar into front upright. And the judges would consider this as close bar work because a lot of the moves, the hips aren't away from the bars. And in the exercise, she will incur an overall deduction. Nice whip giant there, building up into the double layout dismount but the gymnasts at the top of the world producing such high level performances that the middle of the road gymnasts as I would consider we're seeing here they really have to perform a perfectly executed routine on the difficulty that they have to stand a chance of getting anywhere our first chance to take a look at number 309 Yelena Piskun, the world vault champion, 
and a title that she collected in emphatic style last year in Birmingham. Well, I have to admit it's been a year since I've seen Yelena in action, and this will be one that we will all be watching very carefully. She's performed well. The scoreboard tells us on the first vault, 9.687. And by our recollection here and accounts, that puts her on target to go into first position in this vault qualification. Remember, only eight will go through to the finals at the weekend. Oh, and just peel off a double twist like that and land still and that's the world champion for you you know it looks as though she's going for a morning stroll no effort at all the Urchenko with double twist it wasn't perfect she was a little under twisted towards the end but uh, when you're doing a 10 tariff vault in one of the first rounds in competition three and you haven't had the general warm-up procedure of three competitions really just shows how much in touch she was. Chris and a 9-5 for that vase, and that really was a good score. She ought to be pleased with that. Probably a personal best. To get 9-5 in a world championship is no mean feat. Hulan Mo of China, the last performer in rotation two on the asymmetric vase. And we saw Hattigan do a Gaylord, and we've heard that Mao is the same. And this just looks tasty. Beautiful shape. Forward giant. Gaylord tough. And the Chinese always come up with a pearl. They have since... Oh, what a shame. No. Back in 81, Ma Yan Hong, world champion... No, Marshy, coaching in Liverpool and passing on her words of wisdom. I'm sure she'll be watching that and almost crying for the kids. And that will knock her right out. Nice, tight giant forward. Hi, Kachev. And that really was such poetry, absolute beauty and difficulty, and the pace was going just right. And she's probably caught that 99 times out of 100. Well, that really is a very sad, and the tears will quite rightly start to flow there. She looks so strong and confident, but it really is a very, very fine line that these girls are playing with. And the mistake coming here in slow motion just misses the grip. And, well, the camera doesn't quite catch the look on the face of the young Chinese girl. And the Chinese women's team have got such a great record in the asymmetric bars. You go back to Barcelona, Li Lu, taming the gold medal in this. And she's probably saying to the coach, why didn't I grip? Why didn't I catch it in competition? I always do it in the gym. And that's sad. But, Monica, it's good to see the coach there. World Championships gym, no matter where it be, there is still a lesson to be learned. There is, but I have the distinct feeling that if it wasn't the World Championship, he wouldn't be speaking to her. <laughs> I am sure that the lovely, friendly spirit of the Chinese coaches that comes over isn't always there. I think he'll be furious. 1.337, sixth position for Hulan Mo of China. And there is the leader of the vault competition. The world champion is on target to successfully defend her title. As Yelena Piskun for Belarusia goes into top spot in the women's vault. And we take another break from this particular rotation as we move on to rotation three. In competitors are looking at Eurosport live. the third rotation this the qualification if you've just joined us live here on Eurosport for the next two days today and tomorrow for four and a half hours for Gina Gosian of Romania and just a little off balance on the landing 
the Romanian who really did have a marvellous world championships in Birmingham a year ago. Silver medal to Shannon Miller in the all-around side of the top eight as we return once again to the women's vault. Sally Willis of Australia with the first of her two springs. Oh dear, bit of a disaster but uh, she is a tall gymnast. And you know the Australians have done so well because they came into the sport late and they're now ranked sixth in the world. And I don't really think that they will ever surpass what they did at the World Championships in Indianapolis. And Wills' second vault, 8837. Remember that her fall, two hands on the floor, cost her five tenths on that. And also it wasn't a particularly high scoring vault. Handspring one and a half tough only comes in the mid category. Now she can repeat that vault. I'm sure she will and try and do it better. Yes, but very snatched from the top, obviously lacking in power and flight, but probably for her one of her best efforts. But certainly knowing where the floor was a bit better on the second vault, but as the two vaults are average, the first one's going to cost her pretty badly. Dominique Dawes preparing the A-bars. We've already seen her on vault. Well, this was the apparatus that caused a lot of contention and argument after the World Championships of 93, where she claimed the silver medal to her teammate Shannon Miller. Many thought it should have been the gold. So this could be sweet revenge for Dawes here. Strong, but really hasn't got the raw material of a great line. And aesthetically, uh, this does count. But you can't take away from her the magnificent strength. Front up, rise to handstand. Giant full. Oh. Well, technically, we can't take anything away from that, can we? I mean, the dismount was so well executed. Just look at the front uprise there, but wide-armed and often bent-armed, this is the problem. She's really concentrated on her leg line, always together, despite the fact she hasn't got a very good stretch. But the full twist in the somersault and managing to line out, the hours of training that that dismount must have taken. Well, Hattigan leads for Romania, 9.762. 20th spot, 9.056 for Willis of Australia. And we will await that score of Dominique Dawes very patiently indeed, as she, it seems, has thrown down the gauntlet to Shanna Miller. Only the top eight go forwards, but of course there's a lot of prestige and pride with the top placings in each of the qualification apparatus. And here, uh, talking to Wills, is Rodionenko, the Russian coach that trained the magnificent Russian team to the 1981 World Championships. And he really is now in Australia doing a superb job. But I just wonder whether he can manage to coach gymnasts with lacking in the raw material that he's used to coping with, you know, tall gymnasts instead of those selected small ones. 9.725 and Dominique Dawes, surprisingly, goes into second position behind Hadigan of Romania. Things that will be with you for four hours this morning and four hours tomorrow morning as we return to the women's vault with the defending world champion Pisquin still holding on to top position. Uh, this looks to be number 336, which is Sandra Tomaszko of Germany. Interesting to see the, the psychological preparations that the gymnasts undergo because they matter so much. In their minds, they pray see the, the highlighted points that their coaches or that they particularly have to think of, thrust from the, the apparatus, shape in the air, and mental and physical preparation for landing. Because remember, as the splash in the water is and the gymnasts wait for a signal from the judges in the form of a green light above the head judges 
table. And this, a little bit of a delay, but we must have sympathy with the judges because they have many gymnasts, hundred and odd gymnasts to go through on the women's side and over 200 in the men's. And they really must get their act together accurately from the beginning. If their scores start going astray at this stage in the game, when we get to the end, they would really be in trouble. 9087 for the first vault. Two volts and their average. So far, most gymnasts have produced the same vault twice. And that will be down in the eighth. Can spring one and a half for Arnie out. Not really having the pace to cope with it. And the reason that she didn't get around in the twist was because she lacked rotation. The gymnast has to have the availability of rotation to stretch before twisting. In the pike's position, it's impossible to twist that anchor's twist. Be made. It will be a capacity 10,500 crowd. 8.912 for Tomaszko of Germany, 23rd position. We go back to the women's vault and one of Britain's entries, Karen Semenko. Oh dear, and disaster struck. Don't really know why. Missed a hand on the top, I would suspect. Yes, she did. Um, unfortunately for Gareth Davis, who's just standing in the background, her personal coach, he would see that coming, but she really did have a bad runner. It looked like no go from the start. Karen Simcoe, originally from Leatherhead Gymnastics Club, and moved to Bellthorne. Okay, well, it looks like we move on yet again to the asymmetric bars of the girls, and possibly to see one of the... I was about to say Belarusian girls, yeah, Yelena Pichkin, but that's certainly not the leader of the vault, which looks like Svetlana Chorkina of Russia, that familiar black slip of the Russian team. And Chorkina, well, one of the new names to come to these World Championships here in Australia, and of course, with one or two tumbles and not the best of performances from Dominique Dawes and Mo of China, the top eight for the qualification of the asymmetric bars is still quite open in this women's competition. Lana Kokina, hex mount to the top bar. And she really has to go some because she's got to exceed 9.762 to go into the lead. Nice gainer, somersault to handstand, as we saw from Mao. Four giants. Well, it was good, but uh, for my money, I'm just trying to weigh up between Hattigan, Dawes, and Corkina. I think I'd stick my neck out and put her in third place. So let's see. There's now a position to judge, but uh, we have to try and examine how the competition is going. Good skills level. Jump forward, a little slackness on her knees and feet in comparison to two highest scorers so far. Petlana Corkina, the last competitor in this third rotation 
and the women's asymmetric fours. Getting very close indeed now, this ABOS competition for the girls. 9.762, Hattigan and Romania lead. And Dominique Dawes of the United States of America, 9.725 for second position. Now, if she could split the Romanian and the American, well, that really would guarantee her a place. As we move to the last of the vaulters, Yariza Julian of Puerto Rico. And that's the plain Sukahara Pike. Obviously, the Puerto Rican into the competition, the World Championship level for the first time on the women's side and very much for experience the very fact that the gymnast is large and the vault is a Sukahara suggests that they're just really getting to grips with the modern methods of coaching and the modern science of gymnastics but uh, everybody has to start somewhere oh Corkeen has gone into the lead I would have put a bet on third place she did have more difficulty but Blacker, 9812, that's a surprise. And the first surprise one had to say in this women's competition, qualification. No medals being decided today, but very interesting the judges marking in the women's A bars, and it's some, certainly something that we will watch through in the last rotation of this women's qualification as Julian, the Puerto Rican, takes her second vault. And really a wise choice of all. Two Sukahara's Pike scoring only sort of just below the nines, but far better to, to go in and perform something that she can handle. As we've seen already, many people come to grief because they're trying too much and on the pressure of the day, they just can't cope with it. And the second vault will score very much the same as the first, so she'll come out in the high eight nines. Becca. 23rd position there for Yuli. Well, welcome back to the 1994 World Gymnastic Championship from Brisbane in Australia. We've come to an end of our live broadcast as there is a short break, but that gives us an ideal opportunity to take a look back at the action that happened earlier on this morning. Kelly, Kelly back in the Rome and then in 64, then they had some barren years, and then since the late 70s, they really have come to the fore. Um, Paolo Bucci, Yuri Chetti, Boris Pretty. Well, number 384 preparing there for Russia is Ina Kochitkova. And Leonid Arkev, who had just given Vasilenko <laughs> the rough end of the stick off of that floor routine. Um, Kochitkova had better watch herself because I don't think that he's the kind of man who can stomach two failures in close succession. And I think she'll know that. So Dina Kocikova to a bars. And she looks nice. <laughs> Focusing giant Katshev inwards. Reverse salto to handstand on the bottom bar. Clear to Shafaznik of a nice combination. There, change of direction on flight. A little bit of knee bend on the stoop. Dynamically, an excellent routine. I think the, first, the balance of the routine wasn't as good as it might have been as regards difficulty because the first half was action-packed and different. And I think this is what bar work has lacked in the last few years, variety. And there was such variety in about fifth. And Kochidkova coming into fourth place there at 9-7. You may as well put, instead of training on six pieces, they can put all of their eggs into one basket. But it really gives a chance for the expert on one piece of apparatus to come through. But this is rare. This is very rare. I think it's likely to happen, possibly on vault and floor. But the overall development of the gymnast is necessary. The strength and the speed that they require from their training on six pieces, generally for them to progress beyond the norm on one piece. <laughs> Two big steps back on that Yurchenko with a full twist.
didn't recognize the motive of the Ukraine. Well, a little confusion in the commentary box here, but this seems to be Elizabeth Valle of the Spanish team. And the 389, we can now confirm. 9162 on the first vault for the Yachinko with full switch. The Spaniards really having lost some of their top gymnasts, Eva Rueda and Rodriguez in the men's. Really going through a few barren years. That second vault the same, two volts for the women. And the scores average. And now we'll look at it in slow motion. The Arab Spring, backward takeoff like a backflip, then one and a half somersault straight from the hand, incorporating a full twist. Very important that the gymnasts get a good sprint. Well, as you hear the announcer saying that that brings a rotation one to an end for the women and also rotation two for the men to an end. We'll take another short commercial break, but we'll be back with the finale of the early morning action from the 1994 World Gymnastics. Fontaine of the United States of America in her second vault, both the... Volts are added together and divided to give an average score for the two jumps. And relative to the scoring so far, 9-6, a good score. The highest we've had has been in the 9-7s. Trying an extra half twist there. Have a look at it in slow motion. And digest the move. The Arab spring, the back flip. And there only actually a half twist. So Larissa Fontaine, not quite as effective on the first, on the second as the first, I should say. Second rotation in the first of the three subdivisions in the women's competition. But an average, well, the same. My mistake, 9.600. Go. Well, to the women's vault once again. And the Ukraine, Oksana Kniznik, in her first vault. It's a different leotard. Nice to see a, a different neckline. Oh, yes. Very, very solid. Brilliant attack. And just seeing her run down to the uh, apparatus tells you exactly how positive. Beautiful, positive half twist. Pity that she didn't nail the landing a little better than that, even. And that was only equaled in the later subdivisions by Alan Norbit of Canada. So before we go into the last live broadcast in around about 30 minutes here on Eurosport, that was one of the best floor exercises of the competition so far for Lee. And that really uh, makes us look forward to Neil Thomas's performance because if 9-4 is the ultimate mark to date, then I think that Neil Thomas stands a chance of matching that mark. But of course, with the change in the code, that's why the marks are lower. It's not because the gymnasts aren't performing so well. But every little error is critical. Oksana Kiznik to her second vault. One and a half. Somersault, half twist. And that was solid. She knew where the floor was. So many gymnasts come over and the floor hits them. But uh, in her case, she knew exactly where she was. She might be light, but she's powerful. A lot of fast twitch, landed with a good, a good leg distance, hip distance apart, 
that's known. 9.643 for Oksana Konichnik. And that's a very impressive Friday, Saturday and Sunday with Thursday the men's all around and then Friday the women's all around competition and a huge amount of coverage from Eurosport which is great to see for gymnastic fans and those who've always shown an interest but haven't seen a lot of it on the TV of late. And preparing now for the asymmetric bongs. Andrea Kukovian. and Kakovian, still the medalist in Birmingham in 93 in the all-around world championship. Superb gymnast, little bundle of dynamite. And she is one of the people who could overhaul the leaders, so we're looking for in excess of a 9.762. Oh, 9812, sorry. Which is short and dynamic. There's half twist. Forward half twist into Ginger. With that touch on the bottom bar would probably be enough. No, this routine isn't going to be enough to uh, take the top score. I didn't know that was coming. <laughs> but there was just something about the tempo of the routine. Her shoulder angle had be started to close. The bar work had become closer. And the beginning of the exercise didn't have enough difficulty. But potentially, in shape, a very good gymnast. but didn't quite get the right shape on those accelerated giants. Her double straight took her in towards the bar instead of away from it. And Octavian, the coach, was a clean exercise but lacking in difficulty. Fourth position, 9.162 for Andrea Karkovian. Well, one has to say, if she hadn't had lost that grip and come off halfway through her routine, that could have been easily a first position. Preparing the asymmetric bars for her routine is Ya Kyo, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, of China, number 375. An indication from the judges that she can go. Well, you can decide for yourselves back home if my pronunciation of Ya Kyo is correct going into my memory banks from conversations so I won't contradict yet. Already seen Mao the young star from China come to Greece and yet another. And that was going to be a wonderful Pike Jaeger. She released just a fraction too early which took her a minuscule amount away from the bars but so many gymnasts go for the move and they don't go for it with the m the most amplitude and that is making the movement as high as it possibly can make the pike as deep as it possibly can fold and this is where the Chinese do they really do go for the move and it either comes off or it fails but boy when it comes off it's magnificent Inward flip it. So that's the front away or fly away, double somersault. And then the second somersault, a half twist. And that most certainly would be developed on a trampoline. But you see, she got her fingertips to the bar, but she was just the tiniest, her judgment just the tiniest bit out. And most gymnasts don't even have the judgment to do it that well anyway. Fifth position, 9.025. So second disappointment of the morning for the Chinese squad with two of their top performers dropping into the lower placings. This was the second rotation of the A subdivision before we return live for the finale of the qualification to the individual apparatus. Olga Kim of Kazakhstan next to take to the A bars.
That was a strong combination, full twisting giant into the ginger. Oh dear, what a shame. Lovely group of elements there from Kim. She'd come down to the bar, she was just about to complete a nice series, ending in a hex to the top bar, and she came to grief. I think one hand slipped off. She's got 30 seconds in which to get back onto the apparatus, and that, of course, will cost her five tenths. Plus, she'll have broken what would have been a splendid combination. But obviously, the chances of uh, winning the gold, as she would be after, out. Now, she would have been one of the medalists, almost certainly. Well, that's why we're following the qualification, see which of the big names and the big stars get knocked out in the early part of these 1994 World Championships. Disappointment for Olga Kim, as we'll take another short commercial break, but we'll be back with the finale to this early action from the World Championships in Australia. Brisbane, Australia, hosts the 1994 World Gymnastics Championships. The world's best travel down under for this outstanding... Yukina's vault score there, 9-3. Kathy Kayser of Australia in the asymmetric bars. Rodinenko, ex-Soviet coach there watching Kathy. Tight giant into Jaeger and this necessary for a change of direction. Catch there, that's the second big release and catch. And double that flyaway, which now is only a B element. And in competition three, they are expected to produce a D dismount. Well, Kathy Kayser. Possibly giving us the best home nation performance we've seen so far this morning. And quite rightly, the crowd giving a much louder and rowdier round of applause for Cathy. Well, that's superb gymnastics. It's not... I mean, for the Australians to envisage producing a gymnast of that calibre um, four or five years ago, they wouldn't have envisaged it. And as you pointed out earlier, Monica, sixth position in the world behind the more established and big nations of the sport really does put Australian gymnastics on. Kathy Kaiser, 9175. Fifth place in the field that she's in in a world championship. Excellent. Amanda Borden from the USA. I haven't seen her compete before. I've heard of her and read about her in magazines, but never actually seen her in action. Full twisting giant, nice catch up, good flight, good distance. And another double flyaway called a Mercer, first innovated by British gymnast Sarah Mercer. She was the first person to do it. And now, of course, a very, very popular dismount. Leg flicker there that I didn't notice before the catch up. And notice the coaches on the podium being allowed to be there. Far better that the coach pushes the gymnast's rear end than they land on the bottom bar. Well, a new star in the making for the American team, Amanda Borden, certainly seemed to enjoy her first apparatus in these championships. We'll await the score from the judges. Preparing in the vault. And Park for Korea. The scoreboard that you see, that indicates the number that the gymnast, the number of the vault the gymnast is about, about to do. There are four sections of vault. And they have to nominate before they go. They can't run down and then, if their run isn't going right, change their vault. They have to produce what they have designated, otherwise they get a penalty. Handspring one and a half pike. 
I know it's easier to put a half twist on so the landing isn't blind, but that just indicates another six to seven months of work. The traveling forward, the landing is blind, and if you can do an excellent vault where you can open out the hips and see the landing, then it's not dangerous. And Borden into first position. A lot of activity towards the end of this subdivision A in the final rotation with the leaderboard changing. Ji Young Park of Korea with her second vault. Nine four one two and four a a nine eight tariff vault. That's a very good score. Just rolled out a little bit. She can either produce the same vault or try to put a half twist on that vault because it's the average of the two that count. Oh dear. Just did not keep her motivation. If she's produced it once, she can produce it a second time. So many times. I wish I had a pound for every time I said that to a gymnast. The gymnastics in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. We've seen some marvellous action throughout this morning. This broadcast began at 8 a.m. Central European time, joining a lot of Eurosports viewers over their breakfast. And we've gone throughout the morning seeing some of the world's best excel and also some big surprises, particularly in the men's pommel hall. Now we're in the qualifying rounds of competition three and there, world champion Hedzen in a very jazzy track suit, a very much more... Neil Thomas, silver medalist from the world champion. Neil really is set. If he can keep the nerves behind him or keep the butterflies down in the tummy really has got an excellent opportunity world championship medal as there is a whole line of gymnastic stars there monica reminds me so much of Lukin in uh, his uh, body language very similar type gymnast and neil thomas opened up on floor with their hands every competition has a 12 meter square floor area um, they're right there, Britain's Neil Thomas. He starts his campaign with the pommel horse, not the most German star, Andreas Wecker, who played runner-up or second fiddle, as many athletes would say, to Yuri Keki in last year's World Championships, claiming the silver. At the moment, Wecker is on target to go one better. Korkina leads in the asymmetric bars for Russia, and in the vault, it's Gina Gurman. Heat up indeed as this is the finale to today's session. Well, the action seems to be got underway and with one of the huge stars, the world and Olympic champion, Shannon Miller, will be the first to vault. She's just 16 years of age from Edmond in Oklahoma and the all-around champion of 93 begins the defense of her title. And now a very much more mature Shannon Miller and has she maintained her power to weight? Yeah. One and a half twisting Yurchenko with a step forward. Nine eight Tara. But obviously much more mature. A young lady now. Not a prepubescent school child. But the question is, has she maintained the power? to go with her increase in size. And I'm not meaning that cruelly. Growing from girlhood to womanhood under normal circumstances is hard on the physique, let alone when you're a gymnast. Well, in the World Championships a year ago, it was the vault in the individual apparatus that Shannon Miller decided not to take part in. But she performed extremely well in the all-around competition to score 9.787. And she seems to be on target once again. 9712 for the first of the two volts. Remember the average of the two is the total scoring. And Shannon Miller, the big favourite to retain her world title here in Australia. Seems to have settled, calmed the nerves nice and early on in this qualification competition. So single-minded. She goes through her little psychological and physical preparations, half twist feet a landing half twist feet yes yeah, still at a very difficult vault there's so much 
cross speed to anchor. There's a rotation, twisting factor. You know, you're, you're turning on two axes, the broad axis and the long axis, and with the cross speed, and then a blind landing. Really hard to perform, and gives away one secret. They can't yet double twist the Yurchenko, you see. Well, 9.724 is the best aggregate score by Romania's Gina Gosian with the defending world champion in this individual apparatus, Yelena Puskin of Belarusia, 9.712, second position. And now this is important for the Americans' confidence. This is still the qualification round, and 9.706, well, that puts Shannon Miller into third position in the vault with her performance on the asymmetric that goes into extra or automatic mode and he's on target for a second gold medal a good run there from Ivanov not to be confused with Ivan Kov of Belarusia as we now move back to the ladies vault with Hughes of Australia young Joanna first vault Yoshenko full twist and we get very complacent about watching these young girls produce vaults of such difficulty. Understand the required amount of work over the years that has gone in to produce a vault of that calibre. The overhead view shows the risk factor. There is a pad over the end of the board so that if the heels slip down they don't come to grief. But she was very near the top of the board and hands rather near the front end of the horse which meant that she would close her shoulder angle off the top of the apparatus and snap the vault down and the jump backwards on landing was really the result of that where she didn't lift from the horse and get as much length as she could have done she certainly had the cross speed 9.4.5 9.45 first vault and she gets another Decent vault, even the same vault, same score under her belt. She'll be doing pretty well. Yes, that was a little better. Can't judge exactly until we see it from the either the side or the top where we can see the length from the apparatus because that's really what dictates the judges scores but lower down the board not yes it wasn't wasn't quite so long but better controlled at the end but it was higher yes i think that's Volta could go above the 9.45. Hope it does for her sake, because she really did put some effort to improve it. Well, we should be seeing away from Grigori Mizutin, and 11th position, 9.481 for Joanna Hughes, but Ivanov of Bulgaria, who only managed an 8th position in the floor final a year ago. Turn their back on the judges when they know they've not done very well. But he, he has a sneaky feeling that he's, uh, he's done more than a good routine. And here, the French connection, Alodi Lusak, superb little 14 year old, medalist in the Junior European Championship, nice change of direction, but like so many, coming to grief, it's a good job it's not the all around event, but it's a pity for her that it's on the A bars because she's a good A bar worker. very composed tiny little girl only 140 centimeters and weighs 37 kilos oh she went up and repeated the skill that was brave coach in ready for the catches good girl Guts written all over her forehead. At 14 years of age, the youngster from Marseille, 
Well, like you pointed out, Monica, it's very pleasing to see the performer do exactly the same skill or move maneuver that caused us to fall from the bar in the first place. And this is possibly one of the most closely contended competitions now with Svetlana Chorkina leading for Russia with Hattigan of Romania and Amanda Borden of the USA lying in joint third with Dominique Dawes. But a lot of the big names are making these mistakes. And as you quite rightly pointed out, it's a good job it's not in the all-around competition. Maybe more risks are taken or higher and more difficult jumps. And a similar scoring for Elodie Lissac. Welcome back to the Brisbane. Shannon Miller for the United States of America has made her first performance and has shown. And the moment that everybody here will be waiting for. Olympic and World Champion Supreme. A really great gymnast and uh, form through the off-season and with all of the travelling he's had to encounter the best all-around gymnast in the world and in the Olympic Games so the big star of the sport and as our expert Monica Phelps has said his lifestyle has changed somewhat since those 92 Olympic victories so he's still just as readily as he is anywhere else in the world and they were up into his flat showing his money, his medals and I think it was a little bit disillusioned for a while. And the social problems have caused uh, them to steal. We switch over to the girls. And this looks like to be Joanna Hughes of Australia. And the 304 for the asymmetric bars. And in the women's... Had a good start on both, Joanne. Straight on work and the shoot to handstand. Good clean exercise. Mid routine difficulty, very adequate. Just uh, needing a big dismount there to make that routine quite complete. Tall order for this young girl in competition three where a D dismount is expected. A nice Delchev somersault working out of it well. It's not necessarily just doing the moves, it's working out of the moves and then adding yet another difficult skill on to the end. Hint of bent arms, which of course will be penalised two or three times in the support phase. I didn't see that. I looked at my notes and I missed the double back. It was a, a full twisting double back. So I'm saying she's needing a more difficult dismount and she's got it. Well, she needs to score above 9.500 to stay within those eight competitors who will return at the weekend to vie for gold, silver and bronze. And 9.50 to go ahead of the Canadian girl Mary Lou Cousineau, currently lying in eighth position. I think the routine warrants that. It depends on how many minor penalties she had that the judges picked up that uh, we didn't while talking about the exercise. But on face value, it seems that it's worth 9.5. Well, 9.812 is the best score in the women's asymmetric bar competition so far. Svetlana Chorkina, and she's outside. 9.300, 14th position. So that leaves Joanna Hughes with a possible chance in the all-around competition coming up later on this week on Friday but for the asymmetric dance or draw to a close as we have the Slovakian Kuchaka over on a bars it's losing her feet and foot and leg tension on the circles and up start Full twisting giants, full twisting back away. With two somersaults in it. It's amazing how some of these girls can 
produce such a variety of complicated skills. Notice from the overhead level how they go over the bars, between them, over the top, underneath. They have to have at least two flight elements. That is over the bars, be at the bottom of the top bar, and at least three bar changes. And I wouldn't think material for the final. This front. 21st position for the Slovakian. Krečkova, 9.162. Now, I'm sure you can hear the cheers from the crowd. And this is what all the cheers of the crowd have been about. Shannon Miller, the asymmetric bar. This is the individual apparatus where she is the defending world champion, albeit in a controversial bout with her teammate Dominique Dawes a year ago. Surely that was a front for the television, Steve Nuno, giving her some last-minute instructions because... A gymnast of her calibre, the last thing she needs is a, her coach in her ear just before a routine. The start clear half, looks tight. Full twisting hop, Ginger. One and a half twist back straddle. Oh, that was a dicey moment. A little bit itchy with the right hand and double layers well that will be controversial Shannon Miller has had to go for difficulty she has them but she has stiff shoulders and slightly bent arms and slightly slack knees throughout the routine they are very very slight but I think that the judges will either choose to like the routine or choose not to and so it'll be a very close fought thing well, there's not a lot of leeway when it comes to the point scoring. The degree of technical difficulty was quite clearly high. She seemed to be, as Monica pointed out, quite tight on many of the manoeuvres, especially the dismount there. She didn't seem to give herself a lot of height there or time. Whips that last back somersault through. She needs to score above 9.812 if she's to take the lead away from Svetlana Chorkina and Hadigan, who's in second position for Romania on 9.762. And I can't see it because she did have a minor error. Um, well, it was a medium error, really, because she went one and a half twisting giant, back straddle, and she nearly missed her hand. And it was apparent that she had a hand shift. Well, the two American girls and teammates of Shannon Miller, Amanda Borden and Dominique Dawes, both lie in joint third position, 9.725. So, well... A replay of that showdown a year ago in Birmingham is on the cards as we await the score of Shannon Miller, the world asymmetric bars champion and, of course, the world all-around champion. And Shannon, well, in the Olympic Games, was a bronze medalist in this particular. Important scores from two of the biggest stars. And look at that! The defending world champion of asymmetric bars finds herself in seventh position, 9.637, which means two performers go better than that score, and Shanna Miller is out of the individual. Action begins, and the words from our experts here in the commentary box, Monica Phelps. Evidence, Monica. Yes, but I think no matter how much I want our home guy to win, I really think he's going to be hard to push through over the whole share boat. Really has been set a very difficult target and a very difficult challenge to attack indeed. The women's vault competition is still wide open, and as we pointed out earlier, eight slots her first vault. No, my mistake, and we return to the action, and Lavinia Milicevic is... In action now as we return to the pictures. The silver medalist in the World Championships a year ago in Birmingham, 9.737. She's on target to take first position. Milicevic, a real tough cookie. Medalist in the 88 World Championship, uh, Olympic Games, World Champion in 91 in Indianapolis. First vault wasn't as good as that, it was over-rotated, second one was under-rotated a little. She really went to try and anchor the landing a little better. But looking fitter than she did in 93, 
Nancy Street, she was a little overweight when seeing her in the flesh. But on the box, she looks a lot fitter. Oh, uh, rather a large step back there. But excellent uh, dynamics. Good high vault, lovely. What a pity. Well, Melissa Vinch looking to return to the form that brought her Olympic gold in Barcelona in 1992. And she's there. 9.731. And she goes into first position. Gojian of Romania. Got that all-important borderline. It's basically the, the, the lack of landing skills on all of his tumbles. And uh, what with polish, what he could have done. Letitia. Sorry, Monica Martin from Spain. Ready on vault. Two volts. In the highest categories possible and two scores average so consistency is the name of the game. Yashchenko one and a half quick. But as I've said so often it's a blind landing and accuracy is so important on a front landing. I don't know why they choose to do it. I know it gets extra marks on Taris. They lose on form. Very athletic run. And that was a matter of the floor hitting her rather than her hitting the floor. And this is why the knee bend was so sudden and out of control, because she didn't have, mentally, her brain didn't have time to adapt the muscles to the position she needed to be in. It only takes a split second for the message to get from the brain through the nervous system if, if the gymnast sees the floor first or sees the floor as they hit it. But it was apparent there that she was blind when her feet... ...from the floor, but to the pommel horse was a disaster and he will not be figuring or competing in that individual final at the weekend. Vickley Sherbo needs to now put that behind him and focus on asymmetrics, it looks to be. Carrero of Guiana. release and catch into counter swing into Jaeger it was meant to be a hop change but she walked around full pirouette on the top need good balance to do it that method another full twist and full twisting double back Luis quite a big girl and there was some difficulty in that routine. She had Pike Jaeger into Straddle Jaeger. Big dismount and cleanly executed. But technically, it wasn't good enough to make the top eight. Basically, that the one-handed change from the handstand to the hop, quite a big technical error. And in the closeness of competition these days, you don't get in the top eight in the world with a large technical error in the centre of your routine. 
But nevertheless, in saying that, despite that fault, there was some excellent routine, excellent work, good combination, more than adequate difficulty, two Ds required, and more than two Ds fulfilled. And also one of the smallest federations here, Guatemala, my mistake earlier on. And good to see them not only represented, but represented with the top class and quality gymnasts. Nine point five eight seven. Well, that's eighth position, and that is the cutoff mark. If nobody betters that score, we sat will be in the final of the asymmetric bars, and I'm sure she'll be delighted if she can. But there's possibly one youngster who can stop that, and that's Jamie Hill of Canada. Next to compete. Another rotation to follow this one. Yes. Anything can happen in these qualification rounds. We've seen many are upset. nothing one can do about that if your angle of um, pitch to the floor is incorrect you just get bounced back onto your seat but very disappointing after putting in all that work to get through the routine with difficulties and just a youngster only 15 but she's got plenty of time and she should learn from that experience half turn to handstand drop see the the arm bend really aren't committed. There the Kachev. There the blind change and the forward giant front away and she just put her feet out in front of her hips when she didn't have quite enough rotation. 9.812, the leader Svetlana Cholokina. Still holds on with Nadia Hattigan for Romania lying second and the two American girls, Borden and Dawes, in joint third spot. A surprise possibly for most so far in the asymmetric bar competition for the girls is that Shannon Miller finds herself down in seventh position and quite easily the possibility of being squeezed out the Magic 8 and the defending world champion could quite possibly not be rejoining us in the individual. I keep repeating these are the individual qualifications not affecting the all-around competitions which begin with the men on Thursday and the women on Friday. And Jane, Jamie Hill just seems to have picked herself up reasonably well. Isn't by any stretch of the imagination devastated. But in a competition, once the damage is done, it's done. They're really, and same in training, these kids have got to learn to pick themselves up and carry on. Eight, six, eight, seven. And uh, the four would have cost her five tenths. And to the final round of subdivision C, rotation four, we have two groups. The last group on vault and the last group on A bar. And within those groups, some very good gymnasts. We've got Elodie Lusak from France who messed up on bars, but uh, on vault could be very, very powerful. Lavinia Milicevic, who's just gone into the lead on vault, and that is just enough to psych her up, a big enough carrot to possibly let her overhaul everybody already on the asymmetric bars, including her own compatriot. Then, of course, we've got Lu Li from China, quite an unknown quantity. But by the years, as they develop and change, we're not sure whether they managed to retain the same power as they had a year ago. Looking good in warm-up there. And then from the Ukraine, 
Bulakova, Irina Bulakova. And to me, only a name read from books. I haven't actually seen her in the flesh before. So quite intriguing, Nick. Well, it is, and there's also worth noting that Shannon Miller in the asymmetric bar competition lies down in seventh position. And with, well, at least two competitors that we've ticked here in the commentary box that could push her down, possibly even three. That means that it's very doubtful whether the defending uh, world individual champion in this apparatus will return for the final out of the weekend. And, well, for most of us, that's the first big shock of the 29th World Championships of Artistic Gymnastics. Disappointing also for Vitaly Shervo, who started off his campaign in marvellous form on the floor, only to have an absolute disaster on the pommel horse. He too will not be in that individual apparatus final. So, there have been some highs and lows for all of the competitors as we go into the last 20 minutes coverage from Brisbane. And all eyes on Milicevic, who started off in great form for Romania, she will be the first to go in the A bars. And also, well, there's one or two that could also upset. And I'm sure Shannon Miller is watching Eurosports, probably not in Australia, but I'm sure the fans of Shannon Miller are watching very closely indeed. There's also one or two taking a nasty fall in the warm-up there, Monica. Yes, it's amazing how resilient they get to uh, cross the maps now, improved in depth. And they're so well orientated that unless a hand slips, they can pretty well calculate how they're going to land. But this is going to be, this last round is going to be really exciting. I, to be honest, I didn't think Lavinia Milicevic would be here because in 93, she looked overweight, she was bad-tempered, she looked as though she'd had most of her enjoyment out of the sport anyway. And I didn't think she'd continue this year. But she looks fit. She's got the eye of the tiger. And of course, just in front of us here in the Thank Ukrainian, her, yeah. she also seems to have grown an awful lot. It looks like Lysenko, it's not a walk over arena. She quickly gets her warm up as the last competitor of the six in the A bars and five in the vault to bring you up to date with the leaders and their scores 9.812 is Chorkina, Svetlana Chorkina who leads the asymmetric bars which are on your screen at the moment for the Russian squad Nadia Hatigan of Romania third Amanda Borden and Dominique Dawes of the United States of America both lying in third position now Lavinia Milicevic leads the vault, 9.737. Gina Gosian, also of Romania, lies second. And the defending world vault champion, Elena Piskun of Belarus, 9.712. So it's very close. There are no medals awarded today. It's all about qualification with eight places up for grabs. but that looks to me like Lavinia Milicevic and uh, 380 leading the vault, the Olympic champion just have to look at the arms Lavinia Milicevic never wears her leotard down at her wrists always rolls it up to her elbows Getting this final rotation underway with sleeves rolled up for action and work. Lavinia Milicevic of Romania. She's on good form. Oh, arm bend. Can't afford it. Leg split as well. Good beginning. breathe through that exercise. 
Well, she's a double gold medalist in Barcelona in 92, but not in this apparatus. She picked up gold in the floor and, of course, in the vault. Now, in the asymmetric bars, she started off well, but she seems to have grown an awful lot since 92, Monica. Well, she's slimmed down, though. So in 92, she was quite bulky. I think she's got better power to work moving across the bars. You see, that's a penalty. But she'll make the final on that. No problem. Absolutely no problem. Um, she doesn't have it in my hat. I'm not wearing one, but... No, she will make the final on that. She did have a couple of mini crises. Uh, an arm bend on her forward giant and the leg split on her ginger. Well, it was the A-bars where she claimed a world championship gold medal in Paris in 1992. And all she'll be looking for here, one feels, is a good top three, top four placing. And her mission for the day will have been accomplished and she will have qualified for both of the finals that were to be qualified for today with another two apparatus to be qualified for tomorrow. And we look forward to seeing Lavinia in this frame of mind and form in the floor exercise. I've got fond memories of seeing her delight a huge crowd in Barcelona on the floor and she seems to have trained hard, dug in deep and as you pointed out Monica possibly even lost a little weight and feeling a lot better for it and she has been the name that has stuck out throughout this morning's competition she awaits her score from the judges now for her A-bars routine she's done extremely well to maintain um, her world ranking over six years because um, 94 now, she was in the medals in 88 in Seoul, and uh, that is a remarkable achievement. What I can't understand with all that is she's still only 17. Well, everything that we've said has been answered, multiplied, and also agreed with by the judges, because she's gone into first position, and that means a very impressive day's work indeed, as Milicevic leads the A-bars, and the vault and will certainly go through to the individual competition of the weekend as one of the big favorites and for the first time in my life i've seen an overweight chinese gymnast Lu Li. she for a chinese gymnast quite a chunky girl in warm-up she looks as though she could cope with it Nice scoop through. Oh, a bit of uh, men's high bar there. Lovely. A giant through, scoop through to dislocation. Back swing. She's definitely been working out on high bar. Come on. Luli, this is... Oh, yes. Excellent. Now, will she overhaul Milicevic? She could do. Because uh, that was one of the most interesting bar routines seen for some time. This is the first year in 94 that we've really seen some interesting, interesting work. Olympic champion Lu Li. And can she, two years later, maintain a world championship? Different shape altogether, grown a bit. A good shapely. And we'll await that score as we go back to Ji Hai Song of Korea. Her second vault, 8.675. And now let's not forget that this part of the women's competition, the vault, is also being led by Lavinia Milicevic, who may have been coupled off a spot from the Olympic champion in the asymmetric bars. But of course, Milicevic took a sweet revenge in Paris in the World Championships to claim the gold. Very lucky, Mr. Hand. Once you've generated that amount of cross speed, missing a hand, providing you keep your wits about you, you've got enough speed of the heels to take you over the top. You don't suddenly plummet to the floor, but see, hit the horse totally at the wrong angle, not enough heel speed, probably leaned on the board. But it says a lot, actually, for the mapping and the type of apparatus um, that the gymnast just bounced up. 
I mean, it just shows the quality of the apparatus these days. In my day, would have been carted off to hospital and never been able to walk again. Yes, overhauled, up into first position, 9-9. Nine, nine. Superb routine there from Luli. And that really does set the pace for a classic battle at the weekend between the Olympic champion of 92 and the world champion of 92. And I can confirm that that pushes the world champion of 93 out of the battle. It's goodbye to Shannon Miller, but the stars of yesteryear are battling it out and it's going to be an absolute cracker it really is and it's not over just yet as uh, next on the asymmetric bars is monica martin of spain what a daunting task for monica martin to follow luli Fortunately, gymnast star of the nature that she would be insular and thinking of her own routine. But very clean. Very clean. The, the Rueda style, I can see. And the whip double back. Pike Jaeger. The undershoot half turn in the straddle float. You can see shoulders forward and some arm bend manifesting itself. 7.950, understandably after that tumble and fall on her second round vault for Chai He Sung of Korea. One of your favourite competitors, Monica, Elodie Lusak of France, next to take to the vault. She's dynamite, she really is. I mean, she may be young. Look at the score, 9.562. Come on, she could... What do we need to get into the final on the vault? 9.5? No, higher. Interesting Yachenko. I mean, at one time, gymnastics was absolutely and utterly dominated by the Eastern European countries. And now some of them have gravitated towards the West. Um, Eastern European and Soviet and Chinese coaches have spread their wings throughout the world and spread the word of good gymnastics and helped us all. But nevertheless, for a 14-year-old from France to rise up above a generation of Eastern European, Asian and Soviet gymnasts, you have to have a very, very special quality. And I can see it in her. She generates enthusiasm, doesn't she? She certainly does, and she knows when to pull off a big one, and it was needed, but not quite enough. 9.625. If she'd have done that on the first vault, then the youngster from Marseille would have found herself in the vault final. But it's quite rightly pointed out by Monica Phelps, we've not seen the last of that youngster. Tumalevsky from Anita Tumalevsky from Norway. <laughs> Sorry, that was Fryanen from uh, Finland. Same colours. <laughs> Same bag, different colours, really. And spring pike one and a half. That was quite a sound vault, a little bit messy around the legs and quite an ungainly run, but you don't get marks for the run. It's what the run provides for you that affects the vault. Plenty of aggression, absolutely plenty of aggression. But unfortunately, I would think nominated Pikes and she uh, tucked her legs so she might lose five tenths off her score for producing a different vault than she has nominated. I didn't see her number. 9375, quite a reasonable score for the vault. Good girl. Bags of effort, absolutely stacks of enthusiasm and effort. 10 out of 10 for total commitment there, and that really is, is what the sport is all about. Without all the committed gymnasts, without all the effort from everybody else, our champions wouldn't rise. 
And of course, you've got to have somebody come second, third, fourth, and down oh, yeah. the line, as well as a winner. And here's a youngster in her first World Championships with a very gutsy performance. And it's not all about winners. It's about those that make up the start list and an impressive performance from the young Finnish gymnast. That was an impressive vault, actually. It was very, very high. Might not have been the dynamics of the vault were excellent. It was just the finish of the legs and the feet that weren't so good. But relative to the to the tariff of the vault, that was a, a, a good vault. King Clover from Czechoslovakia. Fabia King Clover to the asymmetric bars. Last but one performer. And these the qualifying rounds of competition three of the 94 World Championships. Shortly we'll have decided the top eight gymnasts on beam and asymmetric bars. Nice little twisting fly away. And good, clean, well executed gymnastics. Just not good enough to make a World Championship final. And it really has been a, a very difficult level for qualification in this asymmetric bars. Uh, as we said earlier, we said goodbye to last year's world champion already with the Olympic champions and world champions of 1992 in first and second position. But, well, a quite innovative entry and exit to the apparatus for in Clover. Clean routine. And to think that there are 109 female gymnasts in the world who can work at the level of competition D. Uh, competition 3, rather. 9406. The vault. And now the world awaits the Ukraine on asymmetric bars. One competitor left to bring our broadcast from Brisbane in Australia to a close. And the first half of two in the qualifications round for the individual apparatus has been as promising as we thought with Vitaly Sherbo pleasing some and not others. 9.312, 25th position for King Clover. She'll be a little disappointed with that. But we already know that um, Shannon Miller is out of the final. Today, so there's only two gymnasts from each nation allowed into the final. So the last competitor, number 395, Irena Bulakova of and, uh, the Ukraine. She's an excellent routine in warm-up. So she could be one of our finalists. Nice full twisting giant. Blind change, forward giant Jaeger. And the shoot should have gone to handstand. Ginger. Blind half, double fly away. Oh. Yes, good routine, but I think she'll just be out of the top eight there because uh, she had a couple of pauses and uh, commas and full stops that stopped the flow of the sequence. Tatiana Lysenko there. <laughs> Teammate Lysenko obviously going round with her on the floor. Lysenko has entered in the all-around event later on in the week. Well, a good routine, but difficult to qualify, and it's worth a note that the highest scores of the day have been will come from the asymmetric bars in the women's competition. Lee Lu scoring 9.9, .9. if she can pull that routine, and that's scoring off in the final at the weekend, then she will most definitely claim the gold medal. But what a great battle that it's turning into with Lavina Milicevic, who's also had what has to say a very good day's work indeed, coming in second position in the asymmetric bars. And the final score, which we have been waiting for, 9.5. 537, 14 spot, as we take a look at the qualifiers in the women's vault, and the best, Milicevic, Gojian, and Pisquin. Well, Shannon Miller goes through in the vault with Korkina and Podkopeva, 
and Kishnink Oksana for the Ukraine, number 393, the last, but for me, my money's on Lavinia Milicevic on that one, and the asymmetric bars, well, if Li Lu can perform like that, Monica, in the final, there will be no stopping her. No, it'll be a very close run battle, and I think a very exciting climax to the day's um, gymnastics. It was a long morning, a long evening for the Australians, a long morning for us, but very, very worth to get geared up psychologically. And they're straight in and onto apparatus. And uh, really, a tall order for beam. That's when the adrenaline is high and breathing isn't easy. And, but remember, this is individual. So, so many people fighting for places and the, the battle is so closely fought yesterday. There were literally hundreds of points between performers, weren't there? And it's an individual competition, but a poor performance in any one of the four or six apparatus for the women and the men could psychologically affect one or two of the less experienced competitors in the all-around competition. They're the two days of competition that are coming up on Thursday and Friday, and that's when the points are added together from all four operators for the women and all six for the men. And Monica, a poor performance on the beam today for the vault, the parallel bars and the high bar. And for those of you viewing in the United Kingdom, it was not a bad day for Britain's Neil Thomas in his floor quest. For those of you that follow the sport, you will know that Neil is the UK's most successful gymnast, claiming a silver medal in the World Championships on the floor last year in Birmingham. Monica, any feeling? He didn't do his personal best and still managed to come into the top eight. So really, it's, it's not always how well you do, it's how badly others do. So there is a chance, a very strong chance. He's a great gymnast got some good execution qualities but it'll be hard pushed I think to uh, beat Sherbo and Korobczynski. Well let's hope that Neil Thomas has saved his best for the final and just to give you a quick rundown on the, the day's action Thursday and Friday from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. That's Central European time. We will be bringing you the all-around competition, Thursday for the men, Friday for the women. And then the finals of these qualifications, which we watched yesterday and today, are held over the weekend. And both myself and Monica will be with you live on Saturday, 11.30 till 2.30 p.m. and 10 till 12.30 p.m. for those individual apparatus finals. So a real feast of artistic gymnastics live on Eurosport up until the weekend uh, today we will now be focusing on the magic eight of we as we have nicknamed them the eight finalists who can qualify for the individual apparatus final and the tension starts immediately Shannon Miller the all-around world champion to the beam to get this morning's action underway and this is a really tough draw for Shannon But remember how experienced she is. She's been on the USA senior team for four years. And looking very, very steady, very cool indeed. And that tiny little 360 degree spin causes so much aggro to the gymnast. One big tumbling series out of the way. Flick the handstand pirouette. The gymnasts have got one minute and 30 seconds on the beam to demonstrate to the judges their efficiency on beam. And it must include combinations of gymnastic skills, which actually are dance movements, like we've just seen, the leap combination. Combination of acrobatic skills. Series of the two mixed together. Pull in, back out. And I think that she'll heave quite a hefty sigh of relief. But in saying that, the wobble on her full spin would have been enough to deprive her of a championship. It very much depends on what the others produce from now on. Well, Shannon Miller, America's most successful gymnast of all time, a silver medalist in the beam in the Barcelona Olympic Games. Disappointment for Miller yesterday in the asymmetric bars where she was pushed out of the Magic 8, the qualifiers for the final. She was finished in ninth position there. 
but had a respectable performance and finish in the vault where Shannon Miller was fourth but as we were discussing earlier Monica she doesn't seem to be like in any kind of the form that she came to Birmingham with all the Olympic Games she set the pace first position 9.825 and that's a healthy score very good very high standard to start and it puts the gymnast to a following right under pressure but I think that will calm down her nerves and probably make up for yesterday's performance. Of course, we mustn't be too hard on Shannon. She is a brilliant gymnast, an absolutely magnificent performer. And perhaps on bars... And the floor, and the first of the floor, and this is possibly one of the most popular apparatus to be seen on the television, along with the beam, and it's China. Mo Julian pointed in the asymmetric bars yesterday 24th position there so she's looking to impress and make the cut in this her last opportunity of the championship but without the fall she would have been in the number one spot powerful opening pull in back out Good link of tumbles there, whip back, whip back, whipping salto. Oh, nice handspring, Rudy, not many women can do that. And that jump combination, high scoring also. She needs a big finish, she's only 14. Powerful tumbler, first major championship, and finishing with a full in back out. Brilliant work from 14-year-old Jolan Mao. And she doesn't look too perturbed at all. It's interesting to see that the Chinese physically have changed. With very powerful legs at one time, they had all the elegance in the world, were brilliant on bars, but just lacked on the vaulting and tumbling skills, but they've obviously been doing their homework on them. Getting into the Magic 8 once again. Yelena Piskun of Yellow Russia on the beam. Yelena, who enjoyed yesterday's action and managed to finish in third position in the vault. So, good championships for her so far. She's chasing Shannon Miller's nine points. 825. Amazing that the gymnasts, despite the beam cover being made of a, a suede fabric, always feel that they need that little bit of chalk to prevent the sweating. A sign that uh, she's a little bit anxious. But these gymnasts have got to make their anxiety work for them on the beam. could have been dangerous. Front somersault, which is a D-valued element, but the wobble would be very costly for her. Full twisting flick to chest, which is called a roof over after it's innovated. What a shame. Flick to two, full twisting back somersaults of the highest category difficulty. But of course losing up to three tenths for that big wobble on the landing. So it was really, for her, hardly worth performing.
Double back tight exit, not living up to the difficulty of Shannon Miller's pull in back out. And she stayed on, but she had two big wobbles, and I'm sure that that won't be good enough to get her in the top eight. Powerful gymnast, well executed dismount. And if we get a close look, look at the middle tumble on beam, it was really good. Well, the youngster from China, Mo Julian, has gone into first position. Another nice, highly landed front mount from Vanessa Baglietti from Argentina. But again, a wobble. Concentration went, she looked on line. Flickly out, flickly out. And it's really hard to get four acrobatic skills on that beam. 16 feet long, four inches or 10 centimeters wide. And it's the incidental leap, uh, which viewers may look upon as incidental, as gap fillers, but in actual fact, they are the ways in which the judges discriminate between the world's best gymnasts. Because the excellent gymnasts have good acrobatic skills and excellent gymnastic skills. There's one of the combinations that leap into a backflip. And all the little chalk marks along the side of the beam. They're all the start point for dismount. One only hopes they pick the right one. Harris spring double tap. Step back, off the tent. Yeah, no Pushku in there. Fifth position in the beam. 9.400. So she stays within the qualifiers. But again, we'll have... Eagerly awaiting the score for her beam, Baglietti from Argentina, and there it is, 8775. A fall after her acrobatic series and a large wobble after her mount cost her dearly. Oksana Fabricinova of Russia, number 386, chasing still Shanna Miller, who leads in the qualification for the individual apparatus finals, 9.825 can afford to go as low as 9.2 to stay within the Magic 8, but that's only so far. Early days in this women's qualification. And they're all having rather a nervous start on those front mounts. But Fabrician of a, a fine gymnast, she really did steal the hearts of the crowd at Birmingham. But already she's established rather a negative uh, attitude to the judges from the mount pulled herself together well. But a beautiful stylist. And just to prove that I can land it, she uh, does it again. And the gymnasts are allowed to put in the same element twice, providing it's in a different combination. Possible thing. Good amplitude there on the second split in the leap and the horizontal leg of the jump where one leg is bent and the other leg straight out in front. Pull in, back out. What a pity about the mountain. Some beautiful work. Positive, well-extended legs and very interesting choreography. Fabricinova, who was sixth in the World Championship beam final a year ago in Birmingham, 
And bar that little error at the beginning seems to be on top. a year ago in Birmingham and bar that little error at the beginning seemed to be on target to qualify for the top eight. Yes and from Arkev's uh, smile when she came off the apparatus he obviously isn't expecting her to win. This is one of the competitions she's in for experience. If uh, he had believed that she could take the title high bar routine without any problem. Sana Kuznick, next to the beam, last of this rotation one, subdivision B. Kuznick. Oh, beautiful jump. That is really difficult because the back leg has to bend, and for a fraction of a second, the gymnast is totally out of sight from the beam. Demands an awful lot of courage and skill to produce that jump. Oh, really out, brilliant stuff. If she goes like this, I think uh, Shannon Miller's first place could go. Brilliant amplitude in the split element. All of the leaps well beyond the split. Already in the vault final. Well, there's a name to remember. She's Nick wonderful gymnast produced an excellent performance one step back on the mount her uh, arab spring straight back didn't quite anchor it but very positive and beautiful here the acrobatic skill series in the middle a flick flack into three layout and the only thing she didn't have was a really difficult dismount a full in back out that's where shannon miller scored above her but the rest of the routine in my book beat, ha beat Shannon Miller. Well, Fabricinova goes into third position with 9, 6, 1, the 2. As uh, Kiznik needs to score 9.825 or above to... Eurosport Live. Big names. Ones that we've been looking forward to seeing here on the floor. Shannon Miller. Still... Hoping to bring you the score to return at the weekend to compete for World Championship medals. Kathy, a newcomer for the Australian team. Flex your hand stand and half turn to chest row. I think an interesting observation to mention which will help the viewers to discriminate between the excellent and the very good is that the judges look out for pace on beam. The faster they move on that beam, the more competent they are. And to be critical of Cathy's performance so far, it's rather deliberate. Lack of pace. Second three girl back acrobatic tumble she's had. So she's doing well for difficulty. Double twist this man. Clean. Lacking in variation of tempo. And an undisputedly good quality work, but really she doesn't have a chance of making that top eight. 
her difficulty isn't adequate. She's not having fulfilled her maximum strength at the moment. Angle. Yellow Lepiskin of Bielorussia to the floor. 12th in the asymmetric bars yesterday, but very pleased with her performance in the vault where she came in third. Handspring, layout front, with one and a half fifths at the end. A Kisun finalist in the 93 World Championship, due undisputedly to her powerful tumbling and not to her gymnastic dance element. And that's the big tumble. One and a half fisting, straight front to finish. She was just outside the medals a year ago in Birmingham. She came in fourth position there. Uh, seemed to enjoy her work yesterday and seems to have done enough. Yu Okaveol of Korea, 9.6 lead and second position for Yelena Piskun, 9.600 in the women's floor. So it's all starting to heat up now in this second rotation. interpretation from Platerati, but of course that's tense out of the floor on the start. A heavy deduction, double width, double twist, and good interpretation for the music. Got more than two seconds in the corner before they tumble.
lacking variety in the tumbles to really make the big time she needs pull him back out multiple twisting and multiple somersaults finished on a triple twist but just really squeezed it around the corner from two and a half there's the whip whip or whip flip combination double twist in the middle of the routine and that's the triple twist at the end but really it was more like two and a half with half spin on the end and that'll cost them three tenths Fabrice Neveu on floor sorry costed Cova I went by the physique and the leotard and not the face. Very similar. Difficult combination, handspring, full twisting front, straight front in the middle there. the big tumble to finish, pull him back out. Well, in the women's code of points, it states categorically that an exercise lacking artistry throughout has a penalty of two tenths. And according to that rule, so far, she is two tenths above any performer we have seen so far. Wonderful gymnastic element, strong tumbles, their handspring, full twisting front, tuck front, good backward and forward variety of skills, half in, half out, a full twist and a double back. And that's the final tumble. And to produce that at the end of one minute and 30 seconds, a gymnast has to be fit. Flatterati, only eight, eight, one, two. And we'll now await his appointment for the silver medalist in the parallel bars as we go back to the beam for Romania, Gina Gogia. medalist a year ago in Birmingham. And she's up. But what a trick to fall off on. Full twisting back somersault on beam. Pretty daunting. In my day I was only contemplating it on floor. Georgian silver medalist in the 93 world all round and there's quite a domestic uh, battle between Milicevic and Gojian and I think that Milicevic will be after her blood after having her team fall from the apparatus as Milicevic did not like being beaten by her in the all around event in 93 at Birmingham the split combination Incidental links on beam look so simple, but they really do take so much work. Very time consuming to learn and master. And the free skill series finishing with a double back, but she's out of it because of the fall after her full twisting semicolon. 10.3 in 10th place, well out of it, and not really a much psychological benefit to all the all around events. But she's tough, and she'll just have to forget it and go back to the office. 
and to begin this afternoon training a little harder. And it's interesting that you note it will be very pleasing to see how that motivates Lena Milicevic, her teammate. But let's go back to the floor and the most exciting competition by far of this morning's qualification round. And Shannon Miller, she's leading the beam. And now let's see how the world champion can master her floor exercise. And she really was a worthy winner of the gold medal at Birmingham in the individual apparatus on floor. But she really has to go some to retain that title. Her tumbling has to be sound. Her gymnastic skills have to be not only neat and precise, but high. And she isn't the most powerful of gymnasts, you can see by the size of her calf and lower leg. Although that's not always indicative of power in Miller's case, I'm sure I'm right. And she's carrying a few more pounds. She's grown up from a, a whippet into a fully-fledged sort of greyhound this year. But still looking fit. And she's busy striking herself up for the landings because the landing skills are so important. The penalties on landing can go up to four tenths this year on the new code. That's the Bible of gymnastics. Every four years it's updated. Well, Shannon Miller claimed two goals in the individual competition a year ago in the World Championships in Birmingham and one was in the floor, which she's now about to try and requalify for in 94 and one was in the asymmetric bars. And it was the asymmetric bars that gave Shannon Miller the, well, her biggest disappointment so far in these World Championships coming in ninth position. She'll put that behind her now. And let's see if the World Floor and All-Around Champion can recapture the form of a year ago. Superb. So neat right across the floor. And she's gone one better, work out of the Rudy at the handspring, one and a half twisting front into the flick. crisis there but a good tumble is outwitted everybody so far on both the artistry and the acrobatic skills beautiful exercise i really can't see the judges failing to see that that is the very best we've seen so far but of course we've got milosevic to come a defending world champion in sparkling form once again the 17 year old from Edmund in Oklahoma, the United States of America's most successful all-time gymnast, five world championships and five Olympic medals, and with that kind of performance, well, number six could well be on the way. The control on that spin was excellent, right up on the toe. Full twisting, flick flat, the last element, and then the leap combination into the spin. So very precise. And she isn't a natural dancer. That can be seen, despite the ballet training she's had, despite the work she's put in. A lot of... Clear first, and that it is. 9.787 for Miller, who now leads in both the beam and the floor, with Tupola for Hungary going into first position in the high bar. And that brings us to the end of the second rotation. And... Oh. And Yo. The 3 2 2 chasing Shannon Miller. Yes, so many gymnasts can produce a front somersault mount, but how many of them actually stick it? Two wobbles 
to start on the side lift and the, the front. Pauses and separations, although they are considered concentration pauses on the, have become so expected that they've now become acceptable. And I'm looking forward to the day where a gymnast can go through a beam routine without the long pauses for concentration. So that their acrobatic skills have more of a surprise element to them. Cosmo had a nervous start and she really has never regained her composure. That is a technical fall. She had to hold on to the beam to prevent her from coming off, so it would be equal to a fall. Double back after a very nervous exercise. She probably performed the exercise dozens of times in the gym without any wobbles, but the pressure of the day got to her, and uh, sympathy is needed. Nobody will be more about it than her, there's no good the coach getting anxious with her. know that Mary Lou is a French Canadian from Quebec. That's the reason for communication in French between coach and Juma. Shanna Miller leads the qualification round and of course qualification is one thing that the final can possibly and easily be a completely different story. Shanna Miller was in exactly the same position a year ago in Birmingham. She led the qualification of the beam well with emphatic style one has to say she was so clear of the rest of the field but come the day of the final the nerves got the better of her and she ended up in eighth position last of the finalists so the goal for many is to get into the top eight but then the goal changes very quickly indeed when that final comes around at the weekend and Cosino 23rd position for the Canadians as we go to Austria now Rusha Kuril few Austrian female gymnasts appear on the international circuit, especially at world level. Oh, very nice, very positive. Not only did she do the front, but she walked out and put a jump on the end of it. It's been nice to see one of these lesser nations appear in the final. Wheel, sea elements, elements on beam and, and floor and bars are valued A, B, C and D. And in this championship the women have to produce two D, one C and three B elements. extremely competent exercise, lacking in the very high difficulty. Yes, I would suggest that that was just a little bit of a stressful dismount for her. Can to see any members of the Austrian team from both the men's and the women's side qualify for any of the individual finals? It would be something special 
if Russia had just done enough to possibly claim a seventh or eighth position. Well, that is the, the, the best female gymnast I've seen out of Austria for many years. We haven't got biographical information on her, but I would yeah. guess she's around about 15, 9062. She'd be quite heavily penalised on the dismount. Guiao Ya of China. We've seen one or two surprises from the Chinese camp. Especially in the asymmetric bars from Liu Li, a newcomer to World Championships, claiming first position in yesterday's qualification. Well, let's see if China has found yet another young superstar. Our spring race to one. We've seen Li Yi Fang, Yang Bo, Li Li, some absolutely superb Chinese gymnasts. Let's jump into front. Good combination. A perfect physique. Aerial walk over. Wonderful extension of the leg. But I would expect those two were intended to be linked if the area walkover has gone well. Good leap combination, change leg split into ring leap. Double back tight. Certainly excellent, but I wouldn't put it in the superb category when we compare gymnasts like Li Li and Yang Bo. But in saying that, each one of those gymnasts has lacked consistency. And I think the Chinese may have gone not to produce the greatest beam routine ever, but to produce a consistent gymnast. there for the double back pike. A D but not an E dismount. And that's where the the uh, leaders so far have scored up. Full in back out. That's the full twisting uh, double back. Well, you wait very patiently to see whether she has done enough. Very difficult for the gymnasts in these World Championships. As we pointed out earlier, the qualification coming before the all-around competition, making it a very open and fair event. But an unfamiliar format for many. And 9.725, that second position behind Shannon Miller of the United States of America. And young Kwao Ya will be delighted with that performance and score. And the action continues and last in this fourth and final rotation the B subdivision for the women is Chiara Ferrazzi of Italy I noticed yesterday that breath brings out rather a ferocious look on her face looking at the apparatus with contempt Focusing backflip, which really didn't happen. Nice combination, though. So every little murmur on beam, every extra arm movement, extra body movement, extra wobble is penalised. Right down to 0.5. Flip. 
Kentucky Tuck Corbett. He's been on that spot without producing anything for over the required limit of two seconds, so even the standing still, doing not a lot in particular, will cost her. Wherever possible, every movement on being should be an element or a scoring element. And all of the gestures should be necessary and artistic. That's back. A very good recovery there from Ferrazzi. She had a, a poor dismount because she totally was offline with the beam. And because she was coming in straddle, she really had to avoid landing on it, to avoid injury. So she not only had the fall, but she lost the whole value of the mount. Just let you know just how narrow that beam is. Not much wider than the white marking down the centre of the road. The 1992 Summer Olympic Games. Certainly having many an enjoyed spectator. Every ticket sold from tomorrow onwards, full house, right the way through until Sunday's individual athlete finals. Well, Sarazi will not have made the top eight due to that the fortune at the beginning, 22nd position, 8.812. It is a world championship. We expect the best, and only the best will qualify for the Magic Finalist or the Magic Eight. Just one more, it seems, two more, possibly, floor exercises. Shannon Miller leads both the floor and the beam exercise, and Gina Gojian is lying second. Diko Dragona of Hungary. And this is 349. Well, 9787 is the best. She can afford to go as low as around about 9495. She too qualified for the final and an opportunity to compete for the medal at the weekend. Out of the floor. And the pulling back out of the court. Hungry, the home of the great Henrietta Anodi. Splendid gymnast, now retired and around travelling around the world, giving exhibitions. But this really was Anodi's forte. So I'm sure she's been used as a role model for Ildiko. Unusual combination handspring, Barani into flick punch front from the straddle jump. Wherever possible, the gymnasts try now to rebound from the floor, which has form to their capabilities. And in such a case, Dragona did out of the floor, perhaps scoring nine, and quite contented with her score and her performance. Uso Young of Korea, the large competitor in the fourth rotation. And spring 
one and a half for St. Francis symbol. Whip, whip, whip. Flick, and the twist didn't come off. She looked negative before she ever ran into that tumble. And I think there, if she can't get tumbles on a day where she's got to have the adrenaline flowing for her, she really is working skills out of her lead. And I think this really isn't her fault. This is the governing body's fault. The middle tumble. She was nowhere near making, and the last tumble she knew before she went she could possibly fail. Full twisting front. So who's the young right out of the league there? Two falls. And in competition and Paul like Marvin will be watching throughout the day to see whether he stays in the top eight. Andrea Karkovan of Romania in the first of the floor competition at 2.30 Central European time this morning. Karkovan, a really tiny gymnast. It's difficult to see exactly how small she is. She's only about four feet nine, but extremely explosive. First tumble there. Full twisting double back. She's going to need to produce that and something big at the end and good artistry to come within a touch of Sharon Miller. And she won't put that out of the floor and the whole skill out of the floor. Fell out of the double spin a little. Out of the floor and out of the final, I would say. Potentially, her artistry and her tumbling is good enough to get her even within the medals. Brilliant gymnast, but desperately underplanned routine. Or she put in an extra step in her run. The final tumble where she stepped out, but she also stepped out and performed the skill out of the area. So she's picked up a fair few penalties. Full twist out of the top and onto the seat, and then onto the seat costs them half a mark. So out of the vault final for Buckner. So a pretty disastrous day for him. And to the beam, Aline de Clemion of Belgium. And it's a good opportunity to see some of the lesser known and Another world rank competitors, well, Fugnes for marks for Karkovian and first position 9.275, but those scores were to go a lot further as Andrea was only the second competitor to take the floor. That competition is now led by Shannon Miller as Helene of Belgium waits patiently for the go-ahead from the jury to begin her beam routine.
cars guys have explained the necessity of good jumps on beam. Um, one can see here using her as contrast, Aline's jump in comparison to the top gymnast are very weak. And when she comes with a low score, this will be the reason why. The leaps aren't high enough, the leg was not parallel, the footwork isn't detailed enough. Much more to be than just the acrobatic skills. well under the pressure not easy for her not many gymnasts come out of Belgium these days they haven't it's a long time since they've produced the whole team in an international event Linda Kramer succeeding in her efforts to stay on the apparatus finishing there with a rather long one and a half twisting back somersaults in the Arab Spring but she stayed on and only 8.45 and that really is due to lack of artistry on the jump. We stay with the beam and Olga Yorkina of Yellow Russia. And immediately we see Belarusia or Kazakhstan or Russia or the Ukraine or Latvia we know that there's a chance that Shannon Miller could be knocked off the top spot because there are sup some superb beam workers have been produced in the ex-Soviet Union. established quickly out to one leg now on with the skills running front the element has already got some difficulty under her belt flick double layout bit of a tense full spin good but certainly not in uh, the keenest class. She's gone. Flick the handstand. As she opened the shoulders, her back went soft and she just couldn't maintain the tension required to stay in the handstand. Obviously a back dismount. Flicks link together, double flick. Double back. Oh dear. Well, a good technician, but really nowhere near the standard of gymnast to get into the medals. 5 0. And if you've been with us throughout the morning here on Eurosport, you will know that that's not good enough to put Olga into the Magic 8. Sally Wills of Australia, who put some brave performances down later on this morning. And let's see how she took to the beam. First thing. Looking anxious. Many of the gymnasts undergo training to cope with the competition. They don't just have physical preparation, but they have psychological preparation. And I think it often goes out of the window when you're faced with that beam. A crowded auditorium and four judges. Oh, stay there. Better three tenths than a fall. Five tenths to a fall, three tenths, almost no matter how big the wobble is. But the psychological advantage of staying on is tremendous. It really is a lovely gymnast. Just look at those elegant legs, very well prepared. Flick me out, flick. And because of the length of her leg, she's restricted in 
her power and probably her ability to back the tumble. That should have been a change leg swiftly immediately into the gainer flick. But it wasn't. She broke the combination. But if the routine is well choreographed and the gymnast has enough skills, the coach can put several linked movements. So if one fails, there is always another later in the routine. Required elements are a flight element, two acrobatic skills, a minimum of B, a mixed series, that's artistic and gymnastic, and the gymnastic series. Double back dismount. Tentative beginning. But Sally, a very capable, skillful gymnast and beautiful to watch. Part of a team that's ranked sixth in the world, the Australia women's gymnastics squad. And certainly a growing force within the sport. And I'm sure there are many purists and gymnastic fans that are as pleased as we are here at Eurosport to see the nations of the Southern Hemisphere starting to become world-renowned and pitching and battling against the more well-known and famous Eastern European countries. And I think they do have a tremendous amount of pressure on them. A, they've got their home crowd. B, this huge sums of money been invested in sport in general in Australia, most particularly gymnastics. And any sponsor wants mileage for their input into the sport. And any coach wants the gymnast to prove it. And uh, the young ladies and men in Australia will be, have been made aware of this. And they really will, besides wanting to turn in their best performance for themselves and their country, they'll want to for the sponsors so that the pennies keep rolling in. And hopefully these World Championships being held in Queensland, Australia, will have a huge knock-on effect in the sport in Australia in general. And motivating many a youngster to take up the sport. First position, 8.937. And that's one that will go through to the end of the women's team, Dina Kochakova for Russia. I hope she gets a better deal on beam than she did on floor. Gojian pitting Kochitkova on beam. Really quite unjustifiably. I know looking good isn't everything. You've also got to produce the elements. But she really didn't make any major errors to warrant being stepped out of the top three. So far, one quite large wobble, but some fabulous skills. Lovely connection there. Leap into the back of the roll. A simple skill, but done so beautifully. And we've already had the full testing call, but in there, just as the students have done it in combination. No easy task. Mountain flick, flick, flick to 152, double back. Well, it's certainly a name to look out for for the future. She seems to have rather a bias on her skills on beam, perhaps not using all the groups required. But certainly a very good gymnast. And we'll see more of her in the future. Who knows? On the podium in the 1996 Olympics, the all round gold around her neck. And Monica, possibly an outsider for the all-around competition here, with the nerves getting a lot the better of a lot of them. The 9.550 Kochikova go into the lead as we take a short commercial break. Due to look at the action from the early morning highlights package before we return to Brisbane for the live and final subdivision. Elena. Polozkova of Yellow Russia, another new youngster and a new name to us here. Oh dear, and 
her chances of meet, meeting the final requirements gone altogether. But a very dramatic piece of music and a well-executed pull him back out, but she sat down out of the floor so she'll still lose the penalty for falling. Can you believe having too much power out of the full twisting front somersault? brilliant but she was either totally confused because she'd never made such a big error before or totally overawed by the situation of being on an international team well a youngster a long way from home in her first world championship and it's my belief monica that the occasion possibly getting the better of her and if she'd not made such a great error earlier on in that performance maybe she'd have been able to have carry it through but so far, she was the best natural tumbler that we've seen, even in the live production. Eve Marie Poulain of Canada. Five meter run permitted. And they're attempting a front walkout, but under-rotated. Front somersault, a very popular mount because it's high-ranking. And really, all gymnasts can produce a front somersault. And those who have the gut to have a go, it's a really good scoring move, but not many of them can finish it off. Standing front to one leg. Quite amazing to think that we take a routine like this for granted because in there there are front somersaults and straight back somersaults to one leg and I'm about to say that it won't meet the requirements. Painful, but I'm sure she's done it before. Every gymnast needs a saddle at one time or another, but it generally happens in training. But I was about to say that in 1976, Olga Corbett produced her first cutback somersault. And just think where gymnastics has developed from then. Straight back somersault. Seen two with a full twist today. Waiting a long time, she's over time now. Two tenths penalty. We'll bring the score from Attila of Canada as we see the young American, 15 year old from Cincinnati in Ohio, Amanda Gordon. Arabian double front. believe some of these girls have got too much power on some of these different things. Two and a half twist. A really sharpened looking girl. Absolutely loads of personality and it comes through. She projects that to the audience. Changes of mood. Mm -hmm. 
beautiful jump combination and very high scoring too. Well, from the wacky to the element, to the elegant, that was great. Loads of personality, bad with artistry, high in team there. I couldn't picture seeing one of the Belarusian or Ukrainian or Russian girls choosing a piece of music such as this, but the crowd certainly enjoyed it. We did. And Amanda Borden's already qualified for the asymmetric bars final, and she could possibly be the dark horse and one of the rising stars from the American team. Yes, I think that, it, you know, to have a piece of music like that is so difficult, because not many people can express it as well as Amanda did. And it may well have been extrovert, but uh, it was successful. Well, let's see what the judges think, bearing in mind that she had that disaster, one has to admit, and say at the beginning of the routine. We'll bring you that score as soon as we can. We return to the beam. Um, Yura Hanako of Japan. So far, the Japanese women haven't featured too highly. Maria Kusugi, or Kusugi has uh, qualified for one final. But Mayura's chance of qualifying on beam out of the window She'd have found it tough enough to get a really good score on her existing difficulty, but with a fall, she doesn't have any chance at all. And unfortunately, the audience is quite well-educated and very noisy during her routine because they sense that she's out of the running for a final place. Double back tuck, slack in the tuck and a little bit dangerous because uh, her shoulders were forward as she took off and so she had to sling her hips into the semicolon. in the men's challenge we stay with the Romanians Nadia Hartigan who had a very impressive performance in the asymmetric balls yesterday coming in fourth there and she's also seen teammate Lavinia Milicevic rekindle the flame with some marvellous form and Monica I have the feeling the Romanian girl could be on a roll at these championships yes they're very I think uh, a lot depends on the temperament of Milicevic but uh, I've known and watched her over four or five years span and in the gym she's not the hardest worker but I think she, her temperament has a tremendous influence on the team she's very positive but Hattigan one of the more elegant of the Romanian gymnasts good combination positive flickly out flickly out Despite the fact that in a in uh, slenderness and line, she looks very similar to some of the Russians in artistry. The Soviet training has still a great advantage over the Romanian camp. Their balletic work is still lacking, although improving. Good 
positive combination, nice shoulder roll there. And how she can develop wonderful flexibility because she too was one of the tighter gymnasts. That was a very solid routine. Wonderful variety throughout the exercise, just lacking the big finish like a full twisting double back. Well, I think you pointed out yesterday, Monica, that if Milicevic starts to slack and let things slip through, this could be one of the Romanian girls to step into Lavinia's shoes. Possibly a little more improvement to come in years and looking to peak possibly in Atlanta at 96, but another star in the making, one has to say. Oh yes, the talent is there, most definitely. And the enthusiasm, because she attacks gymnastics squad as well, Nadia Hatterton, first position on the beam, 9.725, and that guarantees Nadia yet another place in the final, so she will be now in the beam and asymmetric bars finals at the weekend, and welcome back, Svetlana Tordikina, who enjoyed her work yesterday, and has qualified for the vault final in fifth position, she now attempts to do the same on the floor. opening with Corkina that surprised me on the A bars as well because she was the first gymnast to overhaul Shannon Miller. Oh nice combination. Focus in front walk out. But as Amanda Borden from America suited the jazzy, so Coquina suits the classical selection of music. wonderful interpretation to the music and that counts for so much having a piece of music that suits the individual final tumble triple twist and it's simple but with a real triple twist there was no squeezing around the corner well i think that's another one of our eight qualifiers nick and it looks like it's three out of three for Svetlana Cortina. She is yet another very impressive performer who seems to have peaked just at the right time for these World Championships. Doesn't have a great track record up until now, but has been growing, maturing, and timing it. And with these World Championships in 94, another world in 95 in Japan, then on to the Olympics. This is the time to start to make your mark on the world rankings. And Svetlana Korkina, third position in the asymmetric bars and quite rightly pointed out by Monica we're hauling Shannon Miller and also a fourth position in the A bars we'll bring you that score as soon as it comes through as we return to the beam and Charikila Davo of Greece Such a bold front somersault. The best one of the day. Splendid gymnast. I hope she's got the difficulty to match in the remainder of the routine. With quality like she has and the required difficulty, she would make the final. Double back. Back. 
Greece very unexploited, really, as regards gymnastics. Just a few gymnasts starting to creep onto the international circuit. Two or three clubs now in Nicosia and Limassol. But really, the sport of gymnastics is very much in its infancy as yet. Second position, 9.487. And after the live broadcast, which we started with at 8 a.m. this morning, Central European time, that still keeps Korkina. And could be one of the challenges for the all-around competition with the kind of consistency that she has shown us now in the three apparatus that she's performed. The fourth still to come for Svetlana. Hopefully she takes a medal, she'll show us a smile or two as well. Monica seems to be very calm and cool, taking it all in a stride there. Individual apparatus finals at the weekend, and this is what those magic eight places are being contended for. Mo Huilan of China, number 373, will be next to take to the beam. And here's a youngster that also put on some good performances later on in the morning. Charikila, ninth position for Greece. I haven't seen the one arm since Kapoznikova, but Quilan Mo really was so unfortunate on the asymmetric bars because she was by far the best bar worker and isn't going to be in the final because she fell off on one of her dramatic skills. No doubt about landing. Oh, I can't believe it. The best gymnast of the World Championship so far, undisputedly, in talent. And she just can't produce the goods. so much difficulty and she didn't even need the wretched move that she fell off on us. So disappointing. Such a superb prospect. Never mind, we've got the all around to come and wouldn't it be nice to see somebody from China be overall champion of the world. And if she could get it together, she definitely could do it. A superb gymnast. But yet again, missing an individual apparatus final. Mo Hui Lan, who went on to qualify for the floor final after that performance. But at 14 years of age, she really is a shining star and really does have a bright future. Possibly a few world championship nerves, but she certainly let some golden opportunities slip through her fingers. And it's the second time we've seen it now, Monica. Yes, and, and it is so indicative of the Chinese. Somewhere along the line, they miss out on their psychological preparation or there's too much ex expected of them. Because Yang Bo was the same, Li Fang was the same, Ma Yan Hong was excellent on certain aspects. So something is missing because the, everything is there. She's very upset. And I would suspect it could be more pressure than we believe. Well, a youngster who will keep our fingers crossed for in the all-around competition. And if the big guns and the more experienced performers start to let things slip, well, they will know that there are young stars like Mo Huilan, waiting in the background to snap on the tails and heels of any error. 9.312, Monica, with that ball. Oh, it's such a shame. But we do see, I must say from personal experience, we see a very friendly, um, gregarious outlook from the Chinese, but I think behind closed doors, they are very hard on their gymnasts. And I think this is a, an outstanding pressure that they endure. Kazakhstan is next, and Anna Zaitseva.
now that the ex-Soviet Union can be represented by the individual states, we see how much strength and depth they had for their selection of their teams. Zaitseva probably wouldn't have had a look in in the United Soviet Union. She might never ever have travelled out of the country to compete in gymnastics. Oh, boy. Yes, she had to travel to the side of the beam. She only had a hair to come like this man. the dismount it was scary a long way off shoulders forwards and it was only when she landed on the mat that I could see that she was traveling to the right of the beam otherwise she could have hit her head a bit scary obviously she was too that's why she moved to the side well as we pointed out throughout this competition it's good to see all the new Form states of the former USSR are represented here. And Kazakhstan, well, has yet to find a qualifier in any of the finals for both the men and the women, but it's a good point there made by Monica Phelps that many a young gymnast is now given the opportunity to compete with only three gymnasts per nation allowed, but with eight, nine new nations now established as fully affiliated members of the FIG, it really does create a lot more opportunity for youngsters across Eastern Europe to take part in world-class competition. Anna Zaitseva of Kazakhstan awaits her score for the beam before we move on to the final competitor in this third rotation, subdivision A, and fifth position, 9.075. Well, these were the second set of scores for the day. Not good enough to put Anna into the final as Sandra Tomachko of Germany. The last performer in rotation three takes the beam. Luckily out, but so far, choreography really lacking in variety and originality. The turns and the arm actions, quite ordinary. Difficult moves, side somersaults, very difficult to spot. The Tom Tomasco will be very low down on composition scores. <laughs> Execution was tidy, difficulty was adequate, but it really wasn't a very interesting routine at all. That concludes this rotation, ladies and gentlemen. And that also concludes our look back at the highlights. This was the very early morning action, and Sandra Tomasco of Germany, well, Again, we see so many brave performances that as the quality and level gets higher, not quite good enough for the Germans. So we'll take a short break from the action here in Brisbane, which gives us an opportunity to take a look back at some highlights from the World Championships in 1993 in Birmingham. How well they've set up their opposition. Well, 
as the host broadcasters, Australian Television, are in charge of activities down there. We will quite rightly start with Joanna Hughes of Australia. 18th in the vault and 27th in the asymmetric bars yesterday. So, yet to qualify with another two opportunities now about to start for the young Australian. Well spotted and very high pulling back outside. Good jump combination, half fifteen straddle jump from the arrow spring. This is twist. That was different, fly spring, star jump, hex dive roll. Last tumble is going to be very important for her. This could be her entry permit into a final. Good. Well, just let's keep our fingers crossed. It wasn't particularly fast moving. The music wasn't extremely dynamic. I think the choice of music could be a question mark there. But certainly the quality of her gymnastics is excellent. The quantity was more than adequate. And really it's left to the uh, impression of the judges in comparison to what they have already seen on the competition arena. But for my opinion, that's a, a, a possibility of um, a place in the top eight. Good final tumble, double whip into double twist, triple twist at the beginning and full in back out. So she had every area of tumbling required, forward tumble in the middle. And of course the host nation, Australia, has yet to find a gymnast in the individual apparatus final. This could be the first for... Okay, right out. 9.662, yes. fourth position and Australia has found I forecast that possibly Rustam Sharapov wouldn't hold on to that lead for long. Dominic draws to floor. Awesome Dawson. Let's see if she lives up to her name. Three whips. Double twist front walkout. Dub two and a half twist front front. Well, a bit awesome. Pulling back out in the middle. And she knew where the end of that was. Nice double twist jump. Double spin coming up, that's crucial, good. Must have a balanced routine with gymnastics. And that's about it still, still stepped out of that two and a half. Wonderfully exploded. But very clever improvisation out of her tumbles. There were two occasions where she wasn't controlled on the landing and stepped out. But disguised the step out. So it really very much depends on how the judges see the landing. 
think undisputedly she's going to get into the top eight and she'll probably end up in the top four from the score. But there is one, she steps, jumps from the front into a lunge and this final tumble she does also two and a half steps forward. Cleverly disguised, but nevertheless, it wasn't controlled. So for me, I don't think it was good enough to go into the league. Perhaps fourth place. Well, this was the greatest that Dominic Jones did not qualify for, but look at that. The judges liked it, and they're the people who made the decision. ...of China. The team, the team currently led by Shannon Miller. One of the world's best team workers. And the only person to produce that Healy on beam. Innovated from men's parallel bars. But the pressure on Lily at the moment. Because Mo, the diminutive 14-year-old, fell off and was out of the finals. And so this is China's last opportunity to be represented. And she's blown it too. What a shame. The Yurchenko flip as the vault innovated by Natalia and that's the Lili spin. Jamie Hill from Canada to floor. Jamie, one of the new prospects from Canada. Put him back out opener. she can't keep up this pace of work all the way through very fast moving full twisting front walk out nice combination there into our spring one and a half and punch front good tactical move because Jamie's conditioning isn't brilliant she's quite chunky and she hasn't got a beautiful leg line so if she moves quickly there isn't time for the faults to be examined good fast tumbling Jamie Hill 14th position 9.475 first one has to say the floor competition has been possibly one of the most closely contended of them all today Yuka Ari of Japan, having a little wobble, beginning. Bold jump. Any jump on the beam, where the back is arched and the quadriceps are stretched means that the gymnast is blind to the beam for a split second and to rebalance after that is very difficult.
to attack them there, probably won't count. Double back, couldn't make him miss. He had some brave skills in there. The mountain itself takes an awful lot of bottle. The one that Scott Keswick will want to put behind him, Yuka Arai of Japan, has not made the magic cut or the magic eight. He pointed out a brave performance, but the quality is, well, of the highest caliber pointing for the American. We return now to the ladies one of the newcomers, Podko Paeva, from the Ukraine, or one of the rising stars, and the beam, not the floor, I should say. So far, everything she has done has been in the highest rating of difficulty. The second landing hesitancy she's had. That's very hard. Cut front into jump. Really superb gymnast. A little bit unstable on landings, but I think that's purely lack of confidence. Pull him back out. So in the all-around event, she's in the big out of the medal with gymnastics like that. But the wobbles she had and a couple of the skills there, probably just enough to keep her out of getting into the final. Well, we saw Podkayeva for the first time in Birmingham a year ago where Lilia qualifies just for one final in the vault. But she's come back a year later, much more matured and, as we pointed out, a possible contender for the all-around competition. And hopefully... The World Championship nerves will be put behind her after these two days of qualification. And she can pull out some of her best performances in that all-around competition. Called in the background from the Australian fans for Lavinia Milosevic. Fourth position, 9.687, Podkopayeva. Well, that's a very pleasing score for her. She will be delighted with that, as will the coaches. But this is the defending world champion in the beam, Lavinia Milicevic, who's had a good start this competition. She was first in, first and second, I should say, in the two qualifications yesterday. And now she has just beam and floor to do. Well, if the omen is anything to go by, she was last to go off in the beam finals at Birmingham. And it was highly unlikely for her to win, but everybody else had done so badly. She seems to be one of those gymnasts who might enjoy going up. The pressure's really on her now. She knows what she's got to do. Couldn't afford that. obviously getting to her, she's handling it.
two or three adjustments on those three little jumps. But Podska Payeva had an excellent routine, but she had some large wobbles. But of course, that's all she had. Just those two large wobbles. Everything else was so steady. Milosevic, land the dismount, home and dry. Yes, she's in. 9.762 its second position. And Lavinia Milosevic, well, if you look at her results so far, one, two, and two, with her floor exercise to come in the next rotation. And I think one of the key points that you have mentioned, Monica, is that Milosevic and the youngster before her, Podkopayeva, are two of the few competitors today who have made major mistakes. They've made little wobbles, like you've pointed out, but no major mistakes at all. And that's what seems to have dictated and kept Podkopayeva and Milosevic on top in the women's theme, which moves the Americans. Live. Well, the warm-up continues. Rotation three is just about to start. And that's very interesting, exciting. And it looks like, Monica, someone's had quite a nasty fall in the warm-up. Oh, dear. It looks to be one of the young French girls. This is Elodie Lupa. Such a committed, brave little girl as well. We didn't see exactly how she fell, but uh, she has got a bloody nose and uh, a bruised face. But they really ought to leave her lying still. Mm, can't say the least. Well, yes, it was bonus. Height and length that scored him those fabulous marks. Yao Yar of China. Now, just mentally preparing, running through the routine for a last and final time as she takes to the floor. The floor where we'll be seeing Lavinia Malisevic. Dominique Dawes has the best score for the United States of America with Miller lying second and Gina Gogia of Romania in third position. And we hope that young Elodie Lusak is recovered but unfortunately for her she has to recover after a nasty fall before beam. And that is the most alarming piece of apparatus to have to go to after a fall. And we've already seen her in action, and she's a tough little cookie. There's no way that she would lie down and look so distressed if she wasn't really hurt. So to actually pull herself together and prepare for beam is most unfortunate. Floor not quite so bad because balance and nerves are easier to disguise. Oh, a slight delay. See how you are. Waits very patiently and waits that indication from the judges that she may proceed. And I think so far the Australian Federation have done a brilliant job of presenting this World Championship because the entries have been enormous and there have been very few hold-ups really. The back out of the floor area, one tenth gone already. So you can say she's being marked out of 9-9. Nine, nine. Bring one and a half to in front.
It's amazing as the code is developed how elements are linked together very similar and many gymnasts end up with similar types of combinations. The white chalk is put in the corner so that the corners are visual to the gymnasts as they travel at speed. It isn't to prevent them from slipping because the carpet is non-slip. It's purely so they can identify the corner. Oh dear. One and a half. Full twisting front into punch front. And she just landed with her hips out of line and the somersault went down. I would suggest a very, very risky um, dismount really on the floor. She didn't need this the front somersault. Two major mistakes. The first, I think, coming up now, where young Chinese performer steps clearly out over the line. And there is the second. And with the quality, really, of its utmost, one of the most closely contended apparatus, I feel, the floor over the past two days. That's almost a definite non-qualification. It's such a shame because the step out she could have survived. It was good, it was strong, but the mistiming, just unfortunate. On a sprung floor she hit it at the wrong angle at the wrong time. Instead of it really accelerating what you've already created, it decelerates it. There she landed with her feet in front of her body and her hips downwards. So the minute her feet hit the floor, her trunk went down and she couldn't lift the somersault. There's just nothing you can do about a situation like that. Other than don't have it as the last tumble. I think she might change it for the next competition. We'll see if in the all-round competition she changes her tumbles around. Yeah. Thirty first position way down. And Again, a youngster who will look forward now to the all-around competition. And that was her last opportunity to qualify. But add six tenths onto that score, and she would have been in the top. Attitude, eight. but disappointing Italian gymnast there, to say the least. Lilia Podkopieva from the Ukraine, who surprised us with a super beam score coming in this Ranking fourth, ready for the finals, despite a couple of wobbles. Oh, yes. Hamstring, slicing, double front. We haven't seen that. We've seen an Arabian double from Amanda from Barron from the USA. Great, full twisting front. Again, highest possible value on front stumbling there in the women's code. Artistry in abundance, jumps high. But we do need a back tumble to dismount. Otherwise, she'll be penalized for having all the tumbles going in the same direction. This corner a little bit empty. A heavy weight there. That will be a penalty. Pull him back out. And that's put paid to her chances. But far too long a wait in the corner. Before the end of the final tumble. And everything was there, absolutely everything. All the ability was there and just didn't nail the landing. Probably took an extra step of the first tumble handspring, fly spring, double front.
quite the dance drama presentation. This should be the final tumble, and even if she'd landed it, she'd have been very close to the line because she does very long flicks. Yeah, she tripped over her own foot, actually. Uh, such a shame, Monica. It all seemed to be there for me until that last tumble. In stepped Mr. Hesitation, and the whole thing fell apart. At the beginning, it all flowing. It was natural. It was dynamic. And then it was as if it was press play until that last tumble, and then something interfered with the concentration of the mind. And 25th position for Podkopayeva of the Ukraine is disappointing. If she can put that last tumble right, that could have been literally disappear that too. And a fifth position very, very easily indeed. And a youngster I certainly have to admit I've been very impressed with. Just every now and then she lets herself down. It's very disappointing for me, that performance. Well, very important performance to follow. Lavinia Milicevic. That's what the cheers from the crowd are being. She's qualified for every final so far. And this is her fourth and final qualification apparatus. It'll be interesting. The judges make the decisions and, as I said, that's fine. But I think that it's nice to have conflicting opinion. And as I coach, I, uh, like all, have opinions. She got a 10 in Barcelona. And I couldn't quite see why, despite the fact it was a very fast-moving floor routine. It's obviously a newly choreographed routine. and a half good punch front, good tumbling, excellent. The selection of music obviously is there disguising the fact that on artistry she is lacking. And I mean on the quality of feel for movement, not on necessarily the quality of performance of it. Triple twist, little step out. Bags of variety, but for me it didn't do a lot at all. I appreciated it, but it didn't entertain me. And a whole lot of love. The music chosen by Led Zeppelin in an orchestral performance. A difficult one to choose from. It's the American girls, Dominique Dawes and Shannon Miller, in first and second position. Now, Lavinia Milicevic has been in sparkling form throughout the competition. She's not been placed outside of the top three until now. And it's one certainly I'd like to leave for the judges, but there is no question in the quality of the tumbling from Milicevic. The question is the lack of artistry, artistic content, one should say, in between each set of tumbles. But that's why there are several judges. There's a head judge, an STC, that's a scientific technical collaborator who notates the difficulty of the exercise. And the judges to put her in first position. It means the Olympic champion, Lavinia Milicevic, 9.837, pushes Dominique Dawes second and Shannon Miller into third spot, but that's not important for now. There are no medals being decided here today but it certainly gives her that psychological advantage. Eurosport, live. And Sunday to a close. The warm-up once again. Every time we see a tumble now, we sort of tend to watch a little closer after quite a nasty little fall for Elodie Lusak. We still have no reports from her yet, but as soon as there is any information, we will keep you informed. The individual apparatus will be live on Eurosport and we'll be bringing them to you from 11.30 a.m. Central European time this coming Saturday and 10 a.m. this can also keep our eyes peeled for Vitaly Sherbo in this fourth and final rotation as he aims to qualify for his 
fifth out of a possible six individual apparatus finals. Also, Ivanov of Bulgaria and Mizutin will be in action in the vault part of the men's rotation. She's already qualified in the floor, so hopefully that will help her confidence in a qualification that really has seen many of the big guns and top favourites make simple mistakes and will create some very interesting qualifications which we will also view at the end of this rotation. Dominic Gort. Elodie Lusak, the youngster from France who we saw take that very nasty fall on the floor in her warm-up in the last rotation. She's broken her nose and has damaged her teeth. She's called it a day for today and rightly so but the French camper have fingers crossed that Elodie will be back for the all-around competition, which is not till Friday. Good links from Joanna Hughes to Beam. She's already qualified on the floor. Wouldn't it be great if she could make it a double? I've never noticed the audience so quiet. Hear a pin drop. Might be a little short on content. Very clean, well polished, just lacking in continuity and high difficulty skills. But well done, Jo. She gave it her best shot. I think that uh, difficulty would perhaps preclude her from the top eight, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, she's certainly given the home crowd something to cheer about, and is the only member of the Australian team for both the men and the women to qualify for a final at the weekend. And as you quite rightly pointed out, Monica, it really would be a fairy tale come true if she could now make it two out of two. Step back on the landing there, but certainly enjoying this welcomed local. Overall world title. And you could put your rivals right off the target of what your potential really is by producing under par routines. And I wouldn't put a fast Sherbo to do that. Well, we will certainly be riveted to the coverage from Brisbane in Queensland, Australia for the men's all-around competition which starts tomorrow. Both myself and Monica will be back at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning as Joanna Hughes goes into 10th position and Monica rightly pointed out there the content really wasn't there to qualify um, a top eight place. But obviously they're delighted. And that's Congratulations it. to Finland. And here the beam qualifiers and overhauled his doors first, Miller, Milicevic, Kwai, Hattigan, Podkapayeva, Strassman from Germany, and Fabrishneva from Russia. So there's a surprise, a German into the top eight. And then the floor finalist, Milicevic there again, doors again, Miller again. Oh, this is going to be a confrontation. Gojian, Kochkova, and Hughes, Mo, and Kishun. And that's a delight there for the host nation of these World Championships in Brisbane, Australia. Joanna Hughes, number 304, their only qualifier. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these two days of qualification. Please don't leave us now because the action has only just begun. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Central European time.